and welcome to beautiful Kiel, Germany, where we are about to embark on the penultimate day. That's almost the final day, or penultimate day, as Peter Lester would say it, of the NACRA 17, the 49er and the Olympic 49er FX European Championships, one of the most important regattas for these Olympic classes and really the first big regatta of the new quadrennial going forward into the Tokyo 2020 Games. I'm Alan Block, joined by Olympian Ben Rimacher from Canada and German Olympic 49er sailor Marcus Bauer. And uh, boy, it's been an exciting few days of racing. Yesterday we got to see the light air prowess of some of these uh, teams and today we're going to start to see who can handle the big stuff. We've got a fantastic schedule today. We've got the NACRA 17 full foiling class for full foiling division up first. And uh, this is going to be something none of us have seen in Olympic sailing yet. Fleet racing, uh, 26, 25 boats on the line. Um, they should be flying downwind and they'll be working on their foiling upwind. Uh, they've only had the boat for three weeks. But, you know, it's a new era for Olympic sailing. And uh, I don't know, Marcus, what, what do you think? If this was an option for you back in the day, would you have been given it a try? I, I'd like to believe that it would be an option for me now. <laughs> Considering, you know, how things went at the last Olympics, I'd, I'd love to sail the boat. And, you know, if, if things would be right with family and all, all that stuff, uh, I, I, I'd seriously consider it. To me, one of the most exciting things about this entire regatta is something new. You know, we don't get to see something new all that often in sailing, especially something completely new, um, learning new modes, learning an entirely new way of sailing a boat that changed, you know, completely from a year ago. Um, and to have all this data from SAP Sailing Analytics with us makes it really cool because we're going to know more, probably far more than those coaches and those sailors for at least a little while, hmm. you know. Um, we, we had a chat, and in fact, if you want to head over to NACRA 17, on Facebook, we did our live uh, uh, dock walk here with a bunch of sailors. Spoke to Gemma, uh, Gemma Jones and, and Micah Wilkinson from the Kiwi team. Spoke to the, the fabulous Finn um, who rec rescued her crew yesterday. That was, uh, that was just, just so awesome. And, uh, and, and her crew, who is, you know, who's not a kid. So. Um, yeah, the dock walk there, you, you, met, you talked with Sinem Kurtby and Yane uh, Yarvanen. And yesterday they had quite an interesting episode where they, uh, Yanni fell off right before the lured gate. And, you know, all the coaches, all the race officers, all the safety officials were like, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? And cool as a cucumber, Sinem just walked in the boat, does the spinnaker, went around the lured bait gate, did a quick tack, sailed back up to Yane, slowed down, picked him up, he climbed on board, and they kept going, and they didn't lose a place. He couldn't have done that in the <laughs> America's Cup, could he? <laughs> no, and certainly not in the 49er, either. We talked to Sinem's boyfriend, actually, in the 49er fleet. He said there's no way they would have been able to do that in a 49er. Um, interestingly enough, we, we looked at the tracker, actually, quite in depth to try and find out where the crew fell off. You couldn't really tell. That's how smooth <laughs> she was around the mark, and I asked her, you know, do you maybe just want to leave him on the dock uh, on these, these light air days? She said, you know, drop him off at the top mark. You know? <laughs> so uh, a good attitude, good, uh, great seamanship, and uh, definitely a, a nominee. I'm going to send her in for a nomination to World Sailing for a seamanship award. I mean, that's just unbelievable stuff. Unfortunately, no one, despite the 40 coach boats there in the, the meeting, no one got a picture or a video of it. So uh, I told her, try it again today. I'll make sure the cameras are on. <laughs> but, it, but in the bigger picture, it's indicative of what we're seeing of the sailing characteristics of this boat. With the four-point foiling setup, it is proving out, you know, it's early days, but it's proving out uh, what we hoped in the design uh, would be the outcome, in that it's a manageable foiling class. You know, if you lift one foil out of the water, it might go a little quicker, but around a race course, the sailability for two people is right there, and the top end speed is right there, since it's designed for four-point foiling. That's a big difference from some of the other cats we've seen jump around, especially the, the two-person cats, which have been pretty uncontrollable. Did uh, helmets already become more common? Uh, mandatory. Mandatory. At this regatta Everybody. and at the Worlds, they're mandatory, and yeah. the class will take a view on that uh, at their AGM. Uh, the guys, you know, they're... They're saying it's safer than the last boat uh, with having the elevators, so they're already under more control than they were before, but the top speeds will be higher, and especially when they're pushing at uh, closing speeds, and the, and the consequences of a mistake will be higher. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. all things to balance and safety. But, but you know, we, we see the reason for a helmet. You know, that crew, 
uh, Jan had falling in the water. Now he's bobbing up and down uh, in between the, the, the bottom gates, and boats are coming in even yesterday at 13 knots, which is plenty quick for a sword fl you know, going through the water. I yeah. mean, there are four blades flying through the water. Well, Craig, you know, uh, the race officer's freaking out trying to send his safety boat in, but the safety boat couldn't even really get in there. They have to go down and then come up um, through the, you know, through the, the, the downwind gates to even get there. And by that time, there's already three or four boats going by. Those guys can't see much, so that's, I think, to me, that's why you have a helmet impact protection Absolutely. even more than getting banged around the boat or, or you know, breaking, uh, breaking a mast or crashing. I worry about those guys in the water, and, and I think... Maybe it's a little tougher. Maybe the helmet catches up uh, under the boom sometimes. You know, uh, some people, it just, it, it, some people say, you know, kind of like the ski debate when it happened in skiing. Well, I'm safer because I can see better and I have, I'm lighter in my head. Look, at the end of the day, you go skiing hard, you're wearing a helmet now, right? Yeah, and you want to keep your head. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look at results in the NACRA 17. They're getting close to a start. We've got a radio here working, but going into today's action, it is uh, Ruggiero Tita. Tita. Tita from the 49er, I think, right? Yeah, Ruggie, Ruggie was in the 49er last squad and uh, switched over. He's actually been doing a little bit of both this spring, uh, waiting for his uh, NACA 17 to arrive. And, you know, it's early days, but he's great results so far. He uh, finds himself sailing consistently and at the top of the fleet. He's got, he, if, if people were watching the NACA 17 Facebook page, he was the guy that uh, posted the first full foiling hoist. So he was able to bear away on the foils, stay on the foils, hoist on the foils, and then accelerate. And that was a really neat video. So he's clearly got a feel for the foiling, even though uh, he hasn't really raced it that much. Uh, and good for him. And he's chased by uh, a gold medalist. So you can bet uh, it's going to be a competitive fleet here. Now, now in the, we see Fernando Ecovari and Tara Pacheco um, in second. They've been sitting near the front uh, or at the front all week long. And, and remember, Fernando Ecovari, no young, uh, no young kid. I think he's 43, if I remember right, uh, the Olympian. And, um, and he's, uh, he's, he's a phenomenal tornado sailor and doing really well and uh, not seeming to mind at all about all the young guns on the line. Third, uh, Ben Saxton and, uh, and Dobson. But, but what happened here to John Gibson and Burnett? Um, what are those penalties and, and why do they fall back so far despite, I mean, they should be leading this regatta, right? I believe those are sign-out penalties, and it's probably one point per race. So it's not that they're DNFs. It's, uh, okay. it's uh, not the best way to communicate what's happening there because they actually did race, and they had a single point added to their score. We can figure out a better way to display day. those uh, uh, going forward, at yeah, least we'll, in the future. But we'll try and work on that. Uh, we'll try and work on having no teams penalized for on the on shore incidents. And that's a safety thing, right? You got to make sure that all the everyone is accounted for, and they just didn't comply. Yeah, that's uh, more or less. More or less. Okay, so um, uh, how about Christensen, Lubeck, Norgard, and Viborg? I mean, Annette and Allen looked really, really good, and they just see, haven't been able to consistently be up front. Look, nines and twos, and eights and twos, and. You know the results here. That this is, for the most part, this is a, this is a group of sailors who received these boats who are all at the top of the game. That's how the boats were distributed. If you had a pedigree from the past, uh, you were likely to get a boat first. So it's going to be a competitive regatta, even though everyone's learning uh, from afresh. Every team here has uh, raced against each other for you know years. Probably there's a few new teams, but ultimately. We've got a bunch of competitive people, and it's not a surprise we see the results up and down as teams have good races and bad races and learn things and do things well or poorly. Well, look, um, I want to take this time to let you know about our excellent little competition we've got going. Maybe you can put us in view for a second. We're going to talk about watches. Um, we, we did a, a fun little competition. I think it was your idea, Ben, but uh, we're calling it the Spinnaker Watches 49er competition. That's the hashtag that you use. Spinnaker Watches, our official timekeeping partner here for the 49er FX and NACRA 17 class. We like them. They're really sweet. Um, they've got a special edition Olympic 49er watch. Um, it's their yacht, uh, their yacht timer. It's got countdown 10, 6, 5, 4, 1. It's awesome. Um, it's real pretty. It's a good value, but it looks like that, uh, that any great high-quality watch. Take a look at those watches, then we'll tell you how you can win one. Forgot to get you one.
gorgeous spinnaker watches uh, look like, and we're super happy to have them as our official partner for the 49er. And, uh, and Ben, this contest is about watching live sailing, right? And, uh, you, you know, you don't need to enter the contest if you want to just order a watch for, your, uh, for yourself, for your loved one, for your, uh, your brother who's a sailor, for a dad. Uh, head over to spinnaker-watches.com. Use the code LIVE25 on checkout, all caps, LIVE25. You'll get a full 25% off of any of these Spinnaker watches, and I think free delivery maybe even. We'll see. Um, but uh, how do you win a Spinnaker watch, or at least the vast the majority of the cost of a Spinnaker watch, and uh, what have we seen already in the contest? Yeah, so take a photo of yourself with, your, with whoever you're watching this with and uh, put it up on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag that's in the screen there, Spinnaker Watches 49er. And every day we'll give out a $200 gift certificate towards the cost of one of these watches, which is, like you say, Alan, the vast majority of the cost. Uh, and, uh, you know, let us know you're watching out there. All right, we've got some great entries already. We're going to try and display those for you later today. Um, but uh, as you can see, it is not sunny anymore this is uh this is what i think people were, were expecting from keel some breeze some gray we've seen a little bit of sun but i mean we've had sun most of the week so it's not like it's not like we're feeling uh too dour with this weather but it looks to me though um we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of chop coming in nothing crazy but uh what are we going to expect from the weather today mr bauer well the wind has shifted to the south um probably something like um 45, 50 degrees compared to yesterday. Uh, we're going to see more breeze. The wind's going to pick up throughout the day. That's the forecast. It's going to get quite breezy in the afternoon. Uh, I expect a little bit more breeze on the left-hand side of the course, flatter water on the right-hand side on the course. That was Australian, well, flatter water. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, so that's my rough expectation. Some showers going through, uh, squalls, uh, possibly big gusts coming with those. It looks calmer than I expected and drier. I think our drone is, is already up in the air. It's not as rainy as, as I expected. So could be still a good day of, of, of great sailing. Uh, yeah, this is a classic day of sailing. Uh, decent winds, medium winds, shifty, a little, uh, little bit of uncertainty in the race area. This is going to really challenge our crews. Absolutely. And it looks, it looks to me like maybe 12, 14 knots out there right now, maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, we can see, uh, looks like the teams are in sequence. We've got uh, flags up on the race area, and they're lining up to get their, their runways ready for the start. And uh, Now, these race courses are not like the courses that people have gotten so used to in, uh, in, Olymp uh, sorry, in, uh, in, the, in America's Cup style racing, right? These are standard windward starts and then twice around. Is that correct? That's right. Two laps uh, we have with. We have two marks at the top, but unlike yesterday in the 49er when that was a windward gate, this is a spacer mark, so everyone's going to be rounding the mark support. So uh, this is the basic uh, uh, racing that we've been doing at the Olympics for the last uh, 16 years. Windward lures twice around, three times around if necessary due to uh, course size, but I wouldn't expect that today. On board here with Tita and Banti, uh, our leaders as they prepare for their start. This will be a new challenge for... Uh, for a lot of these teams, they've never been racing in uh, wind speeds as high as this as a group. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of not a new things all at once. So we uh, it looks like they're lining up pretty close here. Uh, I think we're still we're 37 seconds away. Well, there we go. Look at that. Aha. Back on board with our leaders. Oh no, this is uh, Saxon ben Saxton and, uh, and uh, is it Dobson? Dobson. Dobson. Well. So that's one of our uh, that's one of our British teams here. Lot of British teams here on the foils, and just 15 seconds to go as they line up. You've got uh, the German boat down here all the way at the boat end, pretty well spread. Look at the bulge though in the middle of the of the line. Yeah, that's uh, that's the sign of a fleet that's starting to learn how to sail this boat. You won't see that in the Niners, and there they go. Germany wins the boat end, and it looks like New Zealand down toward the pin. And, and it does look like the pin did have some advantage. I can't give it to you exactly, yeah, but you can, it was definitely biased towards the left. I think I'm seeing Gemma Jones all the way down there at the pin. You can watch all this stuff on SAP Sailing on Analytics if you want to put that alongside the live video screen. But look at the moves already. France falling way back behind. Is that someone going? No, yeah, that was Jan Eriksson from Germany winning the boat end of the line. But we saw the Danes below him uh, with better speed already surging forward. On uh, coming towards us here, we've got the Singaporean team of 
uh, Liu and Lim. We saw them uh, win the first race that we went and saw on day two. That's so right. a competitive team. They're heading out to the close side and now on board with Tietze and Banti. Now let's keep, let's keep watching these guys here right now. Look at how hard they're trapping. That's full, full, full trap. Trying to keep the boat flat, as flat as possible. The foils don't really work as well when it's not flat. You can see that lured hull just starting to lift out, but not. no one would call this a full foiling mode, more of a skimming mode. And, and the big question of these teams is when do you start to go full foiling? When do you put the bow down? Down. Is it ever really worth it? No one knows just yet. We're going to find out though very soon, and the speed's already now getting up there. We're going to have a look at the analytics, see if we can oh, find very out how fast he's tack. going. Nice tack. A well, little bit of bobble there, but uh, they seem to be holding their lane. Uh, without the bigger picture, we can't tell exactly why they tacked there, but pretty slick. We can see them now, the crew's re leaning in and adjusting the tilt of the boards there, and that's why you saw the uh, leeward hull was a little more submerged initially and then raised up after she tuned the board angle. Uh, this, like you said, the sailors are trying to get into a skimming mode right now. No one's really mastered the full foiling upwind, uh, but we'll see how that develops throughout the day. I, I know that Paul Kohlhoff and his crew from Germany um, Stuhlhammer, they were they went they went into a full foiling mode the last day that was windy uh, or had some wind and managed to pass six boats uh, in a leg and then quickly retired so no one else could see them. That was on a practice day. So we'll see if anyone can get that mastered today. Meanwhile, Itsuka and Hatayama from Japan lo leading the way out here on the right side. And uh, Marcus, is the right side the place to be in this kind of uh, uh, southerly breeze? Well, as I said, uh, definitely flatter waters on the on the right hand side. Um, but I expect a little bit more breeze on average on the left hand side. Um, because that's where the fjord uh, uh, is more open and it, it, it bends out a, s a slight bit more, I, I expect. Um, are we seeing a left shift? Is that why so many boats are going right or, or we're seeing a fleet split? No, actually since the, the start the wind's just been oscillating between 175 and 180 degrees and the, the trails in the SAP sailing analytics are actually pretty straightly drawn. Uh, it, it, it looks fairly steady. Some boats go a lot lower, Waterhouse and D uh, Darmanin, 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 yeah. Darmanin uh, they they actually went, they do go a lot lower than the rest. So maybe they were trying a foiling mode, and we do see them popping onto the top of our leaderboard. So yeah. maybe it is working. This could be just like the the day where they all tested their uh, sails upwind and people finding modes that are new. And, and listen, guys, it's not Jason Waterhouse helming that boat right now. It's Darren Bundock. Jason's going to come in later in the day, but it's Darren Bundock, Australian superstar uh, uh, catamaran sailor. He's helming. He's the coach of the Aussie team with Lisa Darman, in, and he was really excited to try some of these modes and, and start playing with the foils. He That's really right. was. Jason, Jason Waterhouse has got a back injury he's trying to get back from. So yeah, he's, he's doing subbed well. Out, subbed out for most of this regatta. I talked to his physio and she said, you know, I asked her, what's the key? And she said, he needs to get back out on the water. <laughs> water. <laughs> <laughs> so look at the difference in modes here from Japan to uh, Fernando Ekavari. He's sailing high. He's tended to He's tended to say he's not really interested in using the foils upwind that much. It seems to him like it's faster just to go VMG. But um, we'll see how it works for him right now. He continues to stay in second in this regatta and sail fairly conservatively. It seems like he's kind of trying like a middle range, you know, a middle, a middle. He's not too high, not too low. Yeah, it goes for his tack there to come back. Uh, you know, he's up in the front row of the fleet. Uh, positioning himself, possibly taking some shifts or maybe some fleet position. Hard to know exactly why he's gone back yet a little bit under ley line, but he's decided to uh, maybe the left side. He's seeing that it seems to be coming in well, which it is. Well, and there he's is getting a, back there. Th the boats are pushing high on the left side. I can see that in the SAP sailing analytics, but it does look like they're pinching. Uh, Waterhouse. Bandok, I guess? Sure, we'll call him uh, Bandok. Yeah. Bandok Dahlman uh, are still going low and fast and still leading the pack. But they're in that lower mode than you see than everyone else? Big puff Definitely. coming down, too. You Definitely. can see, look at the top of the screen, you see a big sort of a edge of a puff as well, about to come onto that group of four boats. So we'll see what that does to them. What kind of speeds are we seeing here, Marcus? Do we have that available? Um, no, I just have the average. Uh, well, actually, dude, uh, uh, Darren is doing 13 knots. That's, that's almost two knots more than, than uh, the second place boat. So he's going a lot faster, you, but a lot lower as well. How many degrees lower do you have available? Um, well, he is going uh, 52 degree angle to the wind at the moment, where other boats do like 48, so 45 degrees lower. 
to gain two knots. It seems that's like a nice not trade. A lot. Yeah. That's not a lot of degrees, actually. And, and, and if it's like the moth, you have to put the bow down to get up on the foils, and then you can start to pull the, put the sheet tension on and, and, uh, and start scalloping up. Um, it's, uh, it takes some time to get the hang of it, but certainly Bundy, a good guy to maybe learn your tricks from. And he's still in the lead. Yeah, and we've seen we've seen upwind speeds, uh, boat speeds of up to 18 knots in practice. That's, you, you that's can, in practice, so not at uh, necessarily close hauled, but the speeds can really get up there in the snacker going upwind. You can tell that they're going bloody fast because a boat, our, our rib has problems catching up with them. <laughs> it's the biggest problem out here, isn't it? Like, you really, you kind of need two or three TV boats because you can't catch these things unless you start to go buy those America's Cup, you know, million-dollar foiling uh, motor boats. But uh, nice tack from Tita and Banti. Banti, our only Italian entry, I think, in the foiling fleet. No, we've got uh, Pissarro. Oh, sorry, you're right, Pissarro and uh, Frascari. So, yeah, Pissarro and Frascari uh, sailing in the last quad as well. Uh, new crew. And uh, we're on board here with uh, Tita, and we can see he's he's in full foiling mode. So yep. he's seen something. He's definitely trying to get that lured hull out of the water. Yeah, the, 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 the TV boat's having trouble keeping up with these guys. Look at this. This is full foiling for sure. There you go. Lured haul up. A little bit of windward heel is going to be fast in these things. We've seen it in all the other boats that do this. A little bit of windward heel is going to be amazingly fast. And look at him. Look at the look at him uh, uh, digging out to windward from those boats to, down on the right. So the challenge is here is the shape of the foil is a Z foil, uh, but mostly there's only or there's only about half a meter of vertical below the foil, and then it goes to the angle. And to foil upwind, effectively, you've got to keep that ride height uh, adjusted, and there is no automatic trimmer. So the challenge here is to get out of the water, but not too high that you start slipping sideways. This is a great... I, I can't tell you how good this angle is right now. Look at the two boats directly behind uh, Tita and Banty here. You can see that they're kind of messing with each other and trying to get lanes, and they're going up, and they're getting to windward, but Banty is just going fast forward on, in this full foiling mode, and everyone is experimenting. It's really fun uh, to watch, and now they're back off the foils and sort of working into a more high mode. Yeah, they were probably a little bit overlaid and decided to use that gap to get ahead, use that gap to build their speed, and now they're more on a line to get to a, a windward mark, if I had to guess. Oh, this is lovely stuff, probably into the 15s now. Luckily, our onboard camera doesn't have any issues keeping up. Exactly, exactly. If we have the ability to show speeds alongside these the, the names of the leaderboard at some point, we'd love it, to have that for sure. Yeah, you let's can see get all the, the speeds you up. You can see all the crews adjusting uh, everything because they're just about to approach the windward mark. That was the windward mark in the background. Uh, let's go back to the onboard there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So so they do the reacher mark, and then, uh, oh, wow, so the crews uh, needed, needed to put weight on the wire Look to get above that. some other boats yeah. that are struggling with the hoist. They're going so fast. They don't even need the spinnaker yet. They're going to choose when to hoist. Uh, oh, they're already foiling. <laughs> Wild ride. Look at this. So, look, we, we, we know this is true in a lot of cats. When it, when the apparent wind gets way up, you know, you don't need the, the spinnaker to foil. Maybe you don't even need it at all out here. I mean, that's another me thing to experiment. Reminds me of uh, uh, Frank Bathwaite, father of Julian Bathwaite, who said, well, at some point they'll get rid of spinnakers and, and not need it. <laughs> he was uh, precedent in that comment. Um, you know, we can see here the spinnaker, they haven't even got off the wire to try and hoist it yet, and they've surged ahead of past two boats on this hoist. <laughs> well, look, um, before the America's Cup, Emirates Team New Zealand went out and tested quite a bit without a jib. I actually spoke to, to Glenn Ashby, Darren Bundock's old, old, uh, old skipper, about just that, and they said it was actually faster in some circumstances, but it made maneuvering... Uh, a little bit slower with the jib. You can see now they needed it. They're getting past, but uh, now let's see if they can hang on. What great racing from Tita and oh. Banti there. They got foiling. They kept their cool, stayed ahead of their competitors, and when they had an opportunity, they went for the hoist. This, this uh, is lovely. <laughs> it really, it I, I really like is. It. We're looking at, uh, uh, I think, Christensen and Lubeck here. And look at the speeds. Wow, up into the low 20s already. Good on that Pizarro is, is down speed. You know what, too? Like, pretty stable. You know, even going into that jibe, pretty stable. Like, like Lubeck looks really solid here with Christensen. And let's watch him get it on. Barely coming off the foils there. I mean, this is smooth. These guys look like they've been at it for years already. Yeah, they're... they're they didn't even really attempt to foil through that jive, but they're keeping steady, and that's what's important. They were able to get back on the power right away. Who's that in the lead below? We can't quite see. Uh, yeah, but it must be... It must there. be... Bizarro, still in the lead. Okay. All the way down there to... Uh, to oh, yeah, we can see both boats. So that's an Australian flag and the yeah, Italian the Italians flag. Are, 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 
uh, slightly forward. It's not much in it. It's just um, 15, three boat lengths between them. Not a whole lot at that speed. And, and they're going very fast on wind and very deep. So it's going to be a very short lured leg. But, uh, you know, what's important? We saw we saw lots of stuffing on the three days ago when we were watching them, and so far none of these leaders are stuffing. They're all just able to rip, and that included Darren. He must have stuffed ten times in his first downwind run, and look at him now. Not a single one. He's got it dialed in already. This is very similar to that wind that we saw them in as well. Very similar. In right. fact, 15-ish knots with maybe some bigger puffs. They like, already let the spinnaker flog. They're already pretty powered up. Well, it's time to drop it, get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. so they must have missed the ley line there. Um, go ahead and douse doesn't uh, slow him down too much this is going to be an incident here with uh ro well, with a roll from oh, lubeck boy lubeck trying and to go over the top <laughs> wheelie oh <laughs> no bizarre <laughs> for scaria <laughs> up in the air flying and nice and smooth goes through the australian so and look at this great, great work call. that's a good good job from bundy and uh and darmanin and you can see, not going for the jive drop, just safely go around the outside. And we've got Erickson, uh, Christensen, and Lubeck uh, with a nice tight rounding. That's great racing right there. And, I and already love it. This is only going to get better. <laughs> and, and clearly, like the most experienced guy out there, goes for the really early drop and has a nice clean rounding and maintains his lead, right? Yeah, very smooth on that. They took down the spinnaker without uh, any drama, no healing. It, it, the crew was able to put it away really cleanly. Let's watch the drop here. Let's watch Lisa Darmanin cranking that thing in. No, this is... Oh, sorry, uh, that's Banty. And out on the wire. And there you go. That's pretty clean as well. Nice uh, we're job getting mixed Italian up between deal. our Italians. On the last down one, it was Bissaro and Fronsari we were looking at. So we're on board with... We were looking for two different This is with Italian Banty teams. and Tito, right? This is now, yeah. So let's see... If they go right into that foiling mode, no. See, you can see the, the, the lured hole pounding. You can tell when they're foiling because that pounding stops. Yeah, they've got to adjust the foil rake for the, and start tuning that for the upwind, so it'll take a little bit of time to dial that in. They can adjust the forward foil between a, a, up to about 4 degrees of rake angle, uh, but their rudders are locked for the race. So they have also about 3 or 4 degrees uh, that they're able to adjust them, but that's locked for the race, so they only have one active uh a way to change as they're sailing so it takes they'll have to tune that as they get into mixing their mode with the wind speed so it's like a like a, if, if you moved an entire airplane wing instead of just the back little edge they can they can do that they can move that whole wing uh, that whole foil up to five degrees and i think it's four degrees four yeah. degrees so zero to four or, or i think they can even go negative a little bit as well or they can actually if it gets really really breezy they can rake it forward and instead of creating lift they can create downforce and actually stick the boat to the water and it's safer and slower um and uh may preserve the boat in survival situations like we may have tomorrow that's right Pissarro and Frankari uh heading out to the right side of the course after an exciting downwind they're uh, fighting for the lead of this race with uh, Tornado legend Bundok, who's subbed in and sailing with uh, Darmanin. Uh, typically, Jason Waterhouse will helm that boat, but he's out with an injury right now. Uh, and they're being chased in this image by uh, Christensen and Lubeck, who were the second Danish team from the last squad. Midway up that beat, let's have a look at the SAP sailing analytics. And I invite everyone to have a look at the themselves go to sapsailing.com but now let's have a look at where the course uh, is positioned uh, in relation to the to, to the keel fjord uh, let me zoom out a little bit boats heading out to the left side the fleet is somewhat splitting more people tending towards the left side of the course from this uh, perspective uh, the right side of the screen but if we zoom out a little bit the wind today is blowing out of this fjord and it would bend a little bit around the coast uh, which means that on the um, left hand side of the course we get a little bit of a left shift which uh, sorry on the right hand side of the course they would get a left shift which which is probably not that good maybe the reason why they're heading out uh, towards that uh, uh, left hand side of the course right here possibly also a bit more breeze in that area that's what I would expect and that's what uh, it looks like at least a small majority of the fleet is agreeing with you it looks like they're bending a little bit also down to the left so first boats out on that left side have tacked back we'll see how they look coming back in so these are the boats on the right with uh Bissaro no that's uh, that's Tita isn't it here on the right I think it's Bissaro and Frescari. I think it's Bissaro and Frescari. <coughs> we'll, so we'll get the numbers sorted out of these boats so we can see them better on video uh, in the fall once we've got a handle on the foiling yeah because you don't have the big giant white on black numbers right okay I got you 
I got you. So they're still well below ley line, uh, heading heading um, out on the right hand side, and it's going to be interesting to see whether they're going to actually bend down like like I was expecting, or uh, if um, if they could could sustain their lead. I think currently they're they're in second place. The Italian boat, the Danish boat, currently not in picture. No, they are in picture. They're just in the background, I believe. All right, let me get them highlighted. They're it's way Eka back on the left side. Yeah. Yes, that's Ekavari just to leeward. I believe. Wow. So, and well, let's get those speeds back up again too. It looks like they're really staying nice and steady. So those foils are doing their job. They now have elevators on the rudders, and obviously as much lift or as little lift as they want on the centerboards. Uh, it's a really steady uh, upwind compared to most boats you'd see in this amount of wind and waves. I mean, there is a little bit of pitching, but for the most part, they're able to keep the boat steady and driving. And meanwhile, Bundy and Darmanin consistently the fastest boat out here, and obviously working that mode and in third place at the moment it's super super interesting uh, to see which one's going to work the best here yeah with the top six uh, speeds on the board we can see three of them looking like they're trying to foil probably and three of them looking like they're pointing a little higher at two or three knot difference in speed and a few degrees in uh, angle yeah, Everyone's I'd say trying it, to figure it out. I say at 13 knots, you're not trying to foil anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, 17 foot long catamarans don't go upwind at at 13 knots without some help from uh, from anti gravity. Let's call it. But uh, yeah. And you can see still that bigger breeze hasn't quite settled in. I don't know if it's ever going to settle in today. We should have up and down as as Marcus showed with the wind coming off the land. Definitely, it's been up and down in every time we've had this direction. And uh, I think that's okay. They can handle it now, but I think when the puffs start to get into the 25s, we're going to see some ludicrous speeds. We can see Bissaro and Fascari dropping down a little bit, and I do see a little bend in their, in their course. Uh, so there might be a, a little bit of a left shift on, uh, on that right-hand side of the course. Pretty yeah. solid, uh, solid tack. Back in second place. This is yeah. So this is uh, Banti at uh, Tita, and, yeah. Tita and Banti, not the Pissarro and Francari we're seeing at the front of this race. But they were in sixth uh, place last time we checked the leaderboard, and for the most part, we haven't. S or we saw these guys do a little bit of foiling up when when they were reaching in uh, when they were above ley line. But it seems like they're aiming for a uh, higher mode upwind and mostly keeping that lured hull skimming. Um, with all those waves hitting it, you just got to think it's going to edge higher and higher and they'll somehow make it work. But uh, this is the first time these guys have ever raced in this wind speed in a fleet, and uh, everyone's looking to figure out the optimal mode to get upwind. Very got, tight racing. They've got a 10-point ten, ten lead over the fleet going into this race. And, you know, one of the things, though, that, that most of the NACRA 17 foilers have told me when I've walked around the boat park, Ben, is, is that... Um, uh, they're not really that concerned about the results of this regatta, even though it's still, you know, a funding regatta for some of them. It's really not about the win. In fact, if it's a, if 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 they've got a choice between maybe making a tactical choice or or working on something they've been trying to work on at a specific time, they're going to work on that speed bump and figure that out. That's going to pay more dividends in the long haul. So that doesn't mean this it doesn't matter. Obviously, these are some of the most competitive people in the world, um, but uh, but still, it's kind of it's kind of a low pressure regatta in a way. Uh, it totally is. We we didn't even leave the world uh, ranking points attached to this regatta for the same reason. We wanted teams that felt comfortable to come racing to come and check it out so we can see them and uh, and get a handle on what the racing is going to be like. And plenty of teams uh, have come with the right attitude that we're just going to you, know, you know, come and, and see how the boat performs and have some fun. And plenty of teams decided, oh, we'll stay home and do a little more training. And that's that's so perfectly okay with the class. We just wanted uh, to get a chance to get together with everyone and see what's happening. And we can see, you know, they may not be... Uh, Treating it like it's the most important regatta in the world, but they're pushing. You <laughs> they know, it's still pushing. great racing. We can see Boondock coming in. Three boats all right on top of wow. each other. Get that boat, uh, get that uh, windward foil around real quick there with, with only one in the water. And this should be an exciting hoist. I'm glad we've got the drone here to chase these guys. Boondock and Darman in straight with the kite straight up. Same with Christensen and Lubeck. This is going to be a great run. Only a boat length between all three, or you know, between each boat at the at the top mark. And Lubeck, who'd been leading most of the race today, unable to hang on to the fast foiling Bundy Darmanin. And uh, look at Bundy working it low, working it fast. He's extending both down and forward. 
And, uh, definitely better acceleration after oh, that. Yeah. Uh, he doubled his length of lead, uh, but it's going to be a long leg here. This is to the finish. This is the second lap. What a cool view. Average speed on, on Bundock and Dominin up one knot compared to the other guys. Oh, wow. That's for the, that's that's for the upward leg. Or and up. that, but extra distance, almost 500 meters. There you go. That's what it means to lead. We look. We, this is this this part of it's not new. We know that from the moth. We know that from the GCs. We know that from the America's Cup. Remember, we talked about it yesterday in San Francisco. Twenty knots they started, and thirty-two knots they finished. Um, so that's what we're starting to see here. And I think Bundy's got a handle on these these uh, conditions. But nice work from the Danes, staying reasonably in touch. And one, one thing that became a defining factor in the cup was whether or not you could foil Jibe or not because it took them so long to get go up and going again. Uh, oh, we see that uh, actually the Danes can't jibe. They're pinned uh, to lured by uh, the Italians, uh, Pissarro and Foscari. But at some point, they're all going to jibe here, and you know some of them will do it better than others. What will be interesting to see is how much of an impact that has on the overall uh, on, on distance. You know, We've got a pretty healthy lead here with Bundock, or yeah. at least it appears so. If he doesn't jive as well as the guys behind, does it make it the difference or not? I, if they, if if Bundy doesn't foil jive and someone else does, that lead's gone. It's that fast. By the way, nobody had nobody jiving off to the left hand side after rounding the windward mark. First boat that jived away out of the fleet uh, is the Italians Pissarro and Frascari. Everybody else heading out to the to the right hand side of that downwind, left hand side of the course. I think we're uh, this is Tita. I think that's right. So. So definitely not a foiling jibe, and we didn't see Bundy's. Uh, we but didn't see all the jibes. But I, I, I got to tell you, I think he did okay. His lead started at 30 meters uh, or less at the top of that of that run, and now it's 110. Jeez. Yeah, actually, Christensen and Lubeck are falling back. We can see they're under pressure from I believe that's the Brits behind them, and the other Italians as well. Or, and the other, I think the other Italians have a white spinnaker. Um, so yep, there they are. Okay. Wow. That's Big unbelievable. lead for Boondock. Look at what and, he just uh, did. And Darman in. And he's just got a straight run to the finish. The way he's sailing now, that could be a first win in Breeze. Not bad for Coach. And, of course, wow. his star sailor. And I, here, Oh, wow. I'm a, little, I'm a little amazed right now. I mean, uh, I love it. <laughs> we see Pizarro cutting into the lead right now. As he, he jibed early uh, and was left to the course of everyone else and trapping really hard. I mean, really look, at, hard. Uh, look at Pizarro and Frascari there. Almost 100% committed to the to the uh, straps here. So definitely, oh, here they're going to go for a jibe. How's it going to go? Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Getting ready. Getting ready. Got to get your footing right because the turn is so fast that if your footing's not there, you will fly right off the boat. Oh, almost had no! it. Almost had it, but at the last Ooh, minute. Almost had it. It almost got unsteady. pitched. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's going to seal the lead for uh, Oh, Lund big puff. Big puff, they're out of control a little bit. No! Oh! I think they missed their ley line. They're having to push so oh, hard. Then they're going over. <laughs> no, I gotta. T I can't believe this boat hasn't gone over yet. You know, we've heard from a lot of the, the top guys that it's amazing how stable it is. They come in. Wow! And now we know why they had a problem. <laughs> yeah, they, they missed their ley line oh, there. And obviously, it's Lord. really deep angles, and they're going to have to get used to it. That's a really close finish that, for the top look five. Look at this. Here comes, here, comes, uh, uh, here comes a Spanish boat through the line right on them. I mean, I, way tighter than I thought. That was only a few seconds between man, all the boats. Oh, man. It looks like um, that was maybe Tom coming Phipps as with... well. Okay. Well, we'll have to pull up the uh, analytics here to get the results. That was too exciting to call, but, man. Uh, you know, they were well overstood, obviously, and that's why all the problems and, and puff on. But they, they sure they gave us a little bit of uh, excitement for a moment. You know, they went in for the foiling jibe because it could have made the difference for the win. But I bet you the time it took uh, for them to actually accomplish their jibe put them way outside the arc for what they were thinking. And by then they were way past ley line. But great effort. I, and I'm going to tell you, I interviewed uh, Bor Gulari, um, I think sixth place or eighth place at the Olympics. And obviously double, mo uh, double moth world champion, one of the best foilers in the world really shortly after he tested this boat in, in, in Holland months and months ago, and he told me he tried to get the boat to flip. He tried to get the boat to throw him off, and unless he did something really stupid, it was almost impossible. It's just this four-point filling is so much more stable than the three-point or the two-point filling other people are used to. Um, and he said it's kind of like being on a, on a, in a car sometimes. You know, you can turn hard, you can skid hard, and it just stays there, you know? I think the main challenge will be in really big waves. No one's going to call that easy, but I think in regular sailing conditions, ooh, it's going to be pretty ooh, dynamite. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Just through the finish there. 
Poof, this is beautiful I'm, stuff to watch. I, I, we're in I, for a treat today and tomorrow. <laughs> now we're seeing the Finnish orders coming over. Great job from the dual uh, Italians staying right with each other. And Ekavari, 43, 44 years old, and Tara Pacheco keeping it together as well. Chris Rashley, a wonderful foiler, a great moth sailor, and Merriman coming in in sixth. And the Germans, Koloff and Stuhlemmer, the first German boat, Alan Norgard, Annette Vibor, Gimson Burnett, and Tom Phipps and Nicola Boniface. All right. So Oof. that was exciting, and we've got two more races for the foiling Knack for 17s here today, followed by three races of the 49er Gold Fleet. Altogether, a pretty dynamite lineup. The uh, As we see the back markers still uh, heading through the, uh, the finish line here, uh, obviously we don't get a chance to follow every boat in the fleet, so who knows what troubles some of them are having and, and, and what they're all learning. But uh, that's a little little bit of separation as some teams str uh, struggle a little more than others in these fresh conditions. Uh, so even though we're seeing the top guys sail this boat pretty darn well, you, you can bet it's not easy. And, uh, oh, the Russians almost. The Russians <laughs> just did a really fast, dangerous jibe, and the boat's still on its feet. I'm, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's very easy to point to go high, though. If you if you overlay, overstand, just like the 49er, you know, it's just too too much power to carry high. The boat is definitely doing the driving. And just a quick update from the from the race committee. Uh, John Craig just told us he's going to extend the course a little bit because they were just too fast. That was way too quick a race. He's going to add another tenth or two to the race course, but he's going to be rolling into a sequence almost immediately. Um, Marcus, I wonder. Oh well, you're ahead of me already. Go ahead. Let's well, start analyzing. Yeah, I mean the the. the the interesting number here out of that race is this. I mean, uh, the, the Aussies, they, they covered 700 meters more. 700, if, if okay, can, right there. So right 10,300 so meters to 9624 for the second that, place. That's 700 5%. meters, almost a kilometer extra distance covered. Imagine that, doing that in a marathon, you know. And, and this was also interesting. This was like a 10K run. And how, how long did it take him? 15 minutes what was the what was the time um uh, but that goes to show you know going deep and getting the boat out of the water can pay off big big dividends and and i think uh, really interesting to see how people play with the modes here so just looking at these raw numbers it looks like he covered about seven percent more distance but he went about eight percent faster i mean it's it's really it's really marginal stuff which is yeah. of course why everyone why there's a, is an agreement yet uh but it won't take them long to figure out they'll all have seen what he was doing upwind and they'll see him win the race yep. and they'll be edging and edging and edging and the maneuvers are going to be so interesting i think the jibe we just saw was almost a foil through jibe they're going to lose a lot less uh but let's look at the maneuver numbers on those different boats let uh, me let me just point one thing out okay if we look at number two through twenty or let's say two through yeah two through twenty, the entire difference in average speed I think is about one knot, and if we look at not between one and two, the difference is over one knot. The entire difference from two to twenty, and that's the difference between a foiler and a non-foiler. It's almost like Peter Burling is sailing here. <laughs> 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 yep, that's pretty impressive and stuff, too. boy. And, but, and I will tell you, I mean, well, having watched the last Olympics at length, Jason Waterhouse, now obviously not Darren Bundock, but Jason Waterhouse and Lisa Darman typically were the lowest boat. They loved that low mode. They were okay. super quick in that low mode, so that's not a surprise. Um, but, uh, but yeah, obviously with the foils, it just amplifies uh, how good that low mode is. Same numbers, uh, um, just uh, in a different format. Uh, Echevarri, I think they're still... The overall years, no, they're in second place. Um, in second place overall, they put in a lot of maneuvers and uh, and still could make it in the top five. Goes to show you don't have to reduce them. It's not only about banging the corners. You can make some moves and still end up in the top ten. Um, anyway, uh, really interesting stuff. Thanks for pointing out, Alan. Uh, that is a huge speed difference that, that we crazy? saw from from second to first. That's crazy. It's like you have a nice little bell curve and then just a giant crazy number in the yeah, middle yeah, of it yeah, all. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. But stuff. I could see at the start when the start happened, uh, I could see one boat reaching out at the pin end, and I thought, "What the heck's going on? Where are they heading off to?" But it it did pay, and uh, I think Bundy's got the experience on his belt. I thought that I thought that it was the Kiwis, but uh, but it was Bundy and Darmanin. Next start uh, is already lined up. I think we're in for much less of a wait yesterday. Uh, we just heard next start 
probably in five minutes. On board here with the Brits, I think that is Saxon and Debson. Just uh, sorting out uh, setting there at the bottom of their mast. And uh, we can see the jib flapping. They're in a pretty relaxed mode right now, just prepping for the next race, trying to tune all their settings to make sure they're happiest with, uh, with what they've seen so far and how they're sailing. Uh, I think they were just at the back end of the top ten of that race, so they'll be talking with each other about how to do better and, uh, and also how not to make too many mistakes. This is a crucial, crucial period uh, in, in a general day of sailing, is how much can you learn and keep up throughout the day. Uh, you're, you're stuck in your, in your zone of trying to sail a boat, especially a new boat, uh, so your field of reference isn't always the best in terms of what else is happening on the fleet. And then you've got to have a quick chat with your coach, have a quick chat with your partner, uh, figure out what you can do better, how you can adjust your speeds and your modes and your thinking about tactics so that you're ready to improve for the next race. Ben, you, you know this boat a lot better than, than I do. How solid are they uh, by now? Are there, are there uh, Achilles heels that, they, that, they often, that often fail, or is it already well matured? Well, the boat, none of us know it well enough so far, but in terms of the platform, it's been quite solid so far. The, especially compared to the first generation, uh, you know, it's got a full carbon skin now. It's got extra bulkhead added in the uh, mid-bow and in the stern. And the boats uh, themselves have been behaving really well. Like, we haven't seen failures of rudders. We haven't seen real failures of rudder casings. We haven't seen failures of the centerboard cases. And they're all handling the loads really well. Uh, we've had a few issues with the centerboards specifically that are getting sorted out by the factory right now. Uh, but luckily, that's a Dutch supplier, and uh, they're, they're working as hard as they can to sort that out. But I, I don't think the teams will be worried about uh, durability the way they were in the last squad. They'll be just looking to get it as fast as they can. And what about the one design aspect? One design aspect, very strict now. Is you it? Know, oh, yeah. It's, uh, they, they measured every boat uh, in, a Q, in a ISO 9001, an ISO, uh, I think it's 11001 out in the factory. They then checked them all when they came to the factory in the Netherlands. They measured uh, uh, bow gaps. Uh, between and, and so the orient basically how parallel the, the hulls are they measured the entire uh, 35 boats that came in the first batch and there was only a four millimeter difference between the largest and the smallest the full range uh, very proud of that so uh, obviously if you're going to have a one design class it's very important to make sure it's as uh, one design as possible so the sailors don't feel advantaged or disadvantaged uh, and feel they have to take things into their own hands and that's a main goal of the class right now which seems to be coming to fruition great um, ben Saxton and uh, and Katie Dabson. Now, I didn't Ben Ben sailed in Rio in the Olympics with uh, with another sailor here. I think Nicola Boniface, right? No, it was a different Nicola. It was Nicola Groves. Ah, okay. My and bad. she has retired. Uh, she was actually an FX sailor for a little while with Francis Peters, and then the two of them or Francis started stopped sailing. So uh, Nicola moved over to the Macro 17, and uh, and now she's moving on with her life. Actually, her dad's an awesome sound engineer who uh, was trying to help us out with some onboard audio so it was a real blow to lose her from the fleet but uh, <laughs> i think she's gone back to her studies I, I i'm really looking forward to some onboard audio when we can get that sorted out because that really changes everything we're inside a minute to go here we've got belgium down all the way at the boat end and I bet you Bundy's going to be down there working the pin, oh, although he's at the boat end right there, isn't he? What are we seeing for uh, any any skew of the uh, start line, Marcus? Is uh, it looking pretty fair? Last time I looked, it's just 45-meter uh, bias towards the left. Um, ah, my gut feeling would be head out to the left again. Put the bow down and rumble, run. right? Yeah. yeah, but we're seeing uh, we're seeing Bundock and Darman in. Oh, actually, they, oh, no, they're just, yeah, they are looking for they, a boat spot. Well, they so. are lining up uh, on the on the right-hand side of the line. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to be the ones to watch after that performance in the last race, but I think it's still anybody can jump on a quick advantage here get in, and, and grab a little puff and foil out to the right side and, and work it. Ten like, seconds to go. Yeah, it's all about time and distance here. We've got the Japanese team working their way in, looking very, very strong for the line. And France at the pin. Looked like a clean start, but Japan with a great jump on the fleet. If they're not over early, really beautiful work. And not only that, but they're just a lure of Bundok and Darmanin, so keeping them away from 
put in the bow down. It looks like the Australians have actually tacked out. It looks like maybe Gimson, uh, the GBR boat, is tacked out as well, headed to the right side. Itsuka and Hariyama nailed that start, oh, that but I have brilliant. to believe that Bundok was thinking about going right the whole time, wanted to get out and have that lane to get up in his foils and get that faster mode, and one of the safest ways to get it is to tack right early. The problem is is that Bundy still got uh, somebody on his uh, on his lured bow, so he can't get that foiling going. That's uh, is that Phipps? That's Saxon and Dapson. Saxon and Dapson. So, um, yeah, Bundy's not going to easily be able to sail that low mode. We saw him in the first race. He's going to have to respect uh, Saxon and Dapson, who are no slouches on speed. He's going to have to sail that higher mode for a while until he feels he can crack off and roll, which is the favorite exercise of cat sailors. According to the sailing analytics, start was won by Gimson and Burnett on the left-hand side of the of the race course. Yeah, we, we only saw them far in the distance, but you could see Bundy coming down, trying to get the boat going, and it's a tough situation. This is why so many of these sailors are here and not training in Garda that they were talking about, because as, as uh, Waterhouse told me, as, uh, as Gemma, Gemma Jones told me, it's different in a fleet. You can train all you want, but it's different in a fleet, um, and, uh, and we're seeing why. You know, that tactical foiling is taken away from you when you've got a guy on your lured bow. Yeah, and we, we also just see that in the behavior of the boats. When everyone was training, uh, we had two boats in training for the last three months in the Netherlands, and everyone was trying to foil up wind uh, just to get the fun for it. But once uh, the reality of racing comes in, it's not quite the same. One word about the breeze. Uh, again, fairly steady. We don't see many bends in the in the trails of the boats. It's, it's a fairly steady breeze we have here today. Nice flat water conditions, well funneled through the fjord, so perfect sailing conditions. They look like they're having a lot of fun here. This is a really tight battle. Uh, uh, oh, that D Darren's just decided, or Darren and, Dar and Lisa have decided to bail out and tack. They've had enough of uh, being locked up by Saxon Dabson. If they, they'll have hoped to, that no one tacks to lure to them, and they'll be able to get into the mode they preferred from the last race. He's back on board with. This is Saxon, Saxon and Dabson still. And Dabson, and they still haven't made their move. So heading way out to the right here, also Gemma Jones down here on the right. We don't see necessarily too much of a wind strength difference in the sides on the analytics. Uh, we can only see curves really easily, is that right, Marcus? And yeah, well... So far nothing has revealed itself, basically pretty well, steady. And just looking at it from this angle, you know, there's, there's not a lot of patches out there. It looks pretty solid. Uh, we, we did have a, a bend to the right on the right-hand side, so first boats are peeling off. Uh, maybe that was part of the reason why Saxon tacked, not only the, the bad air. They, they, uh, there's a slight right-hand shift. Okay. Shift to the right on the left-hand side, but it's, it's going back and forth, and it, I would have expected more oscillations uh, with the offshore breeze, but it's thanks to the fjord, which extends like 10 k's into, into town, uh, that, that uh, creates this stable funnel of wind, I believe. Well, one thing you won't see a lot in this fleet is a lot of tacking. Jibes may be a bit less, less costly, but tacking very costly. Maybe three to four boat lanes uh, possibly on attack. Um, in the waves, maybe a little bit less, two and a half, three boat lengths in flat water. And bam, let's see, there's some tacking technique. That's another thing they're experimenting with, Ben, is tacking technique, trying to get some of that sort of America's Cup GC32 style tacking down where the, the, the new hull is up before the crew even crosses the boat. Yeah, I mean, they were used, they were doing that with their body weights before, uh, trying to get the outside hull out of the water so it would have as least, as least resistance as possible, and now they're able to do it much more effectively with the foil. So we should be able to see very efficient tacks and, and even some full uh, foiling tacking uh, probably in the very best of conditions. And, and right there you could see that, uh, that Ekavari had, had not a good tack at all. So, so uh, a really nice tack from Saxton and Gibson, and, or Saxton and um, Dabson. Dabson, and not so nice from Ekavari and Pacheco. Uh, the boat's in the foreground, currently not the leading pack. It's just about, no, they're, they're still out. The leaders are out on the left-hand side at the far end. The, the drone is a little bit far behind to show the right angle. Uh, the leaders are, at the moment, according to the SAP Sailing Analytics, out on the left-hand side of the course. That is Kohlhoff and Stuhlemmer at the moment. Yeah, and we see it's pretty even beat. We've got Saxon and Dabson, uh, along with Waterhouse and Darmanin, went mostly to the right, and we're seeing the actual leaders from the far left, but only 40 meters in it after half a beat or more than half a beat. So a very fair race course right now, lots of good, ang lots of good methods to get to the top in good shape. Koloff and Stuhlhammer really working that right side. They've had a nice regatta. Left side. Left side. 
They're on the left. These guys? That's, That's a, different a different boat. One. Oh, sorry. My bad. A258, let me find out who the But I'm Jan Eriksson along with... Um, that is 258. Red Meyer. Yes. Um, Jan Hauke Eriksson and, and the, Meyer. Yeah, our, our drone coverage is uh, filming from the right side of the course the, uh, today, so whichever boats are coming to the right side, those are the ones that will be on film. And it doesn't necessarily mean they get to win the on the way up wind, though. So, uh, the, the leaders are currently way out here on the other side of the other side of the course that's yeah. that's where the leaders are yeah this is one of the danish pair here on the right looking down the bottom right of your screen i think this is the austrians this is thomas it's oh. thomas sajak along with uh, uh matt and uh thomas uh bronze medalist right bronze medalist from the last quad and he sails a ton of foiling cats but he's hardly sailed the necker 17 at all he had a bunch of commitments when the boats came out so he only had three days of practice but uh he's a regular on the extreme sailing series circuit i think and a wonderful sailor and also a new team he's uh, his uh, teammate from the rio experience is off sailing 49er effects and uh, is here today with and the leading crew. boat currently right here in the middle it's yeah. gonna but I've, I've been watching a uh, uh, bundy and darman and just march up up and down though and we'll see how it goes see if bundy can do it again but still koloff stuhlammer coming from the far left in the lead by a decent little margin yeah bigger bigger race area this time so we can see a longer beat and the uh, the teams have now converged in the center of the uh, beat about 80 percent of the way up so much less separation than we saw off the start line and uh, teams using uh, this period of time to plan their windward mark rounding to get the tactics right. They don't want to uh, get stuck on a ley line too much, and they also don't want to get uh, shut out so they can't easily get around the windward mark due to starboard tack. So that's the game that they're playing right now. Definitely don't want to double tack that final approach. We've see it, seen it a little bit in these cats, and it is absolutely brutal. You can lose five to ten boats in a blink of an eye. Drones getting a gust of wind. Um, Koloff still in the lead, actually oh, here we are getting with, more solid. Uh, here we are with uh, Bundok and Darman, and to try and see what the, that mode looks like, if it's visually different to what we've seen the rest do. So far, you can't see any air underneath their uh, lured hull, so not obvious what the difference is. It's great, It's great though, I mean, how but, quickly the, 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 there's getting to be a little bit of parrot here, but look how launched the Germans are. Yeah, so they're just going into their tack. That's our first view of Koloff and Stuhlhammer of the race, That's and they have consolidated above uh, their, their, their closest competitors, and they'll be on their final approach to the windward mark here. All right, we'll stay with them for this rounding. Drone nice and low. Oh, no, that's our that's our sideline cam. Yeah, the boat's <laughs> like, finally caught up to it. He can't uh, follow them the whole race. <laughs> okay. The drone's low now as well. An excellent nice shot. shot from the air. Good job, drone pilot. That is uh, Koloff and Stuhlhammer just there. Let's look at their mode. Looking pretty quick. And Pissarro and Frascari, uh, who are contending the whole last race, they're coming in from the top left corner. We can just see them on the right side of the screen. Uh, they're going to have to pull off attack here, so I would expect no matter what, Koloff and Stuhlhammer will be leading after the mark. But uh, they've closed the gap here, like you said, Marcus. They're, they're that totally tied yeah. right now on distance, uh, but one extra attack to put in. There's going to be a good study in how much attack actually costs in this, this sort of breeze. Ooh. Oh, can they Are squeeze they gonna, through? I think they're going to be able to cross. Do a, they'll, they'll, oh, no, they're going to go for the duck. And let's see how that distance develops. Then we'll know what attack costs. Yeah, very efficient tack. So maybe two boat lengths. Wow. I can tell you it's 10 meters now, two boat length, 11, 10. Yeah, that was it. All right. 10 here, meters. Here goes the hoist. Let's see who gets it first. Bissaro for Scar, or, uh, sorry, Koloff Stilemmer around. Kite is up, deep, deep angle. Here come the Italians. Bissaro is an F-18 ace, a great beach cat sailor. And uh, both kites are up, neither having great hoists. Here's Saxon and Debs, and we saw them uh, head to the right pretty hard. So people coming in at the top group from all sides of the race course. A very nice hoist from them, and back on the foils very quickly. That's a great hoist right there. That's nice, and you can see them both like locked in a little bit now. And not no no need to fully trap. Get that deep mode. Get the boat stable and haul. I oh, think. we've got a cruising boat <laughs> uh -oh. in the mid I wonder if they what do you know think what they're the, doing. What do you think they're thinking right now? <laughs> they're thinking, this is a great view. I love watching these boats. <laughs> oh, boy. 
This All is right. my bay, he's saying. <laughs> Koloff Stuhlhammer going ahead of the cruising boat. It looks like the Italians will get around, too, without any issue. In oh, fairness, when he, started, when he started crossing the bay, those boats were nowhere to be seen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, reaching probably into the 20s now. They come down, and uh, Koloff Stulem are doing a nice job of holding off the charging Italians. Ben Saxton not able to make up much ground just yet, despite having a better hoist than the two leaders. Going back to the wind plot, by the way, uh, two-thirds up the beat, the wind started shifting towards the left, and that's what, what the Italians benefited from. We saw how hard the Italians were trapping on the last downwind, uh, so we'll s they, uh, we can only assume they're trapping that hard on this downwind, too, and they do seem to me to be closing the gap and using that uh, apparent wind advantage to go lower as well. They're in great position here to certainly put pressure on Koloff and Stuhlhammer, and then uh, if we can keep on board with the drone and through the jibes we can see if one of those jibes makes a difference for a pass I'll tell you what it, it, it when these guys start nailing foiling jibes the way that that uh, we all expect them to sooner or later it's going to change the game quite a bit guys i do have to highlight that the, the sun is coming out a little bit it's <laughs> look at that blue sky what is that <laughs> unfortunately the forecast today was for it's a stop raining a little bit of blue sky to come out and then really big thunderstorms at a, two o'clock <laughs> well, and so be. far the forecaster has been nailing it <laughs> <laughs> there's the oh, first there's, jibe we've seen them go through with busy yip yapping <laughs> And but the Italians have taken the higher lane, um, which means they'll likely have an extra jibe to do unless one of them is uh, messed up on their um, on their lay line. But uh, the Italians have jibed early, so they have as much. They were they were able to sail a little lower uh, than our leaders at, on the first uh, leg. And in that sort of position, it's a position where they can put uh, the leaders under a lot of pressure. What a great shot here from Iran Water. This is the fight for the lead right here, and just like we thought, the Italians are trapping super hard already. It's the Germans, I think the are, Germans are working hard it too. too. The skipper's yeah. a tiny bit high, but it probably doesn't matter very much. Well, we, we do know how dangerous, and we, we just saw how damaging it can be to, to, to miss your ley line. So it's going to, I mean, and it comes up really quick when you're doing 22 knots. They're able to keep the ride height pretty darn good for no active surfaces. That is some steady sailing, and you can. I think the Italians are getting low here. They're, they're able to go down across. Sail, sail just a little bit lower. There's quite a bit of leeward separation, so they're under pressure, but oh, a bounce there. And you can see just from the drone or from the uh, camera boat keeping at a steady speed that the, that slowed them down quite a bit, and they've got to get back locked in. Meanwhile, the, the tracking is calling, uh, it's calling Italy ahead. They have to go for their jibe. They're probably not their best. Yeah, Germans that's a bit odd. surge forward. That's going to change in a minute back to second yeah and now Koloff and Stuhlemmer go for their jibe also down off the foils gaps closing here gaps closing not a very good jibe for oh. the Germans and now they've got tons of pressure from behind well can they get an overlap here for the lured gate I expect I expect uh, the Germans are gonna have to surge low here or maybe jibe out and go to a different gate as the Italians yeah. are gonna make that pass gate, gate has a slight wow, bias. That's oh. Oh, that was late gate has a slight <laughs> bias to the left <laughs> left hand side of the gate is a little bit favored I'll tell oh. you what you that know, was a jibe pass. That was a jibe pass. That was the Italians setting up uh, Koloff and Stulamer and making the pass. They knew they wanted it, and they really worked that all the way in. They had it set up for 50 meters before the mark. Saxton daps in a really nice. Very tidy. Yeah, so that'll they'll make up on that one. And uh, Koloff and Stulamer might be a little shaken by that. We'll see if they can kind of hang up here near the front or if they start falling off the back after such a stressful bottom 100 meters. Uh, we also saw them launch into the air, you know, uh, uh, on that rounding. When you get really deep in these boats, the boat can just do a, a full wheelie, and the bow can get about five meters out of the water. <laughs> Perfect to have the onboard images here as they change from doing 20 knots to 12 knots from downwind to upwind. And, I, you know, I... I, I I like the fact that the separation is not huge, but I also like the fact that everyone seems to be in more or less in control. This is so different from the early days of the sea foiling boat, you know. Um, yeah, we yeah. saw those images at Palma where the, most of the fleet was upside down, and you know, it's not th those conditions yet. It is flat water, but they seem to be pushing really hard for people like they're under control. It just seems like the boat is much more controllable at speed, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's got all these things holding it up and that's a that's a different story from when you've only got one oh, bouncing. Look here, on we one see hull. some foiling on the upwind here. Uh, the Germans have got their bows up and they're definitely taking air. 
So uh, I'd say they weren't intimidated at all by how hard they pushed on that down. And if anything, they've got more ambitious. That's definitely the first full foil. And it was Koloff and Stuhlhammer in the practice race who foiled up win and passed uh, six boats on that one beat and then sailed into the harbor, hoping no one would see them. And so look, they've got it. Very crucially, look, we've got windward heel as well. So, so this, is, this is how you want to sail this boat, I think, in this 15-knot wind range and up. Um, Very steady. You see, you see when they get up on the foil, it's not pitching and bouncing anymore. The waves stop having the same impact, and that's probably where they get most of the efficiency gain. Well, not only that, but, I mean, obviously you're losing all that wave drag. You're losing all that uh, hull drag. Let's watch. Look at them turning it in there, getting the hull up, and uh, slowing way down. It could be a while. It's going to be a little bit before the foiling tax come. Vita Meyer was a, was we'll a 49er weeks. sailor in the last campaign. Nice right. to see some good transitions from the 49er to the NACRA. We'll see a lot of the same skill sets applying to all three boats, the 49er, the 49er FX, and the NACRA 17. And with all everyone in the same boat park, they'll be able to mix and match teams to get optimized uh, in a nice way. Okay. Let's see if we can see some gap in that. Uh, right now he's healed over, you know, the opposite of what you're saying. They'll yep. probably dial those foils in the way they want them, and eventually we'll see it flatly sailed and out of the water. But the, the uh, distance is staying pretty steady here. Which is, a, which is not a bad thing. We're looking on board with Saxton Dabson. Let's keep an eye on them for a while. Watch their body mechanics. The other thing I noticed on, on the German boat there was how far back um, they were trapping. So so that's going to, it looks like, to be part of the key as well to the upwind foiling. Usually uh, going upwind, you know, in these cats, you have quite a bit of wave forward. In, yeah, in, I mean, that's what, when Olympic sailors talk about moating, that's what they're talking about. It's not cracking off the sail and just sailing the rest the same. When you when you try and sail a different mode, it's the jib trim, it's the body position, it's the foil rakes. It's all the different pieces, how heeled over or otherwise you are. And you have to get everything right in order to make a different mode work. And I think we can see a very big difference between the angle of the German of the German boat, who are pretty flat, and the British boat, who are relatively heeled over. Um, and net going almost the same speed. Although the British are passing here. Looks like Bissaro and Frascari are solid in the lead. And they've kept it sort of between 40 and 50 meters, first over Koloff and then over Saxton here, most of the way up this beat. And the skill level of the whole fleet certainly ratcheting up quickly. They learned so much in one day. It's amazing. What, are we seeing anything different with upwind boat speeds, Marcus, compared to the last race, or is it pretty much the same? Uh, you couldn't you couldn't read that from the numbers, I believe. Nobody's cracking the 13 knots on average so far. So it could be that the wind speed's down, maybe a drop with uh, the clear, with the clear it skies. It is a little bit down. The, the, the average currently is, is around 11 knots. I think in the last race we were around the 12 knot, knot mark, so it's a little bit down. We're also seeing all of our leaders and most of the fleet in the middle of the course. So no one, unlike the first beat where it was a huge split between left and right, uh, most of these teams have already made their first tack and are staying right in the column of the middle of the course so uh, uh, having said that the wind is fairly steady there's still lanes and patches that you would want to take and banging the corner is unlikely to be the best course Saxton and Dabson have had a great regatta so far three bullets I think that's I think they've got the most first places of anyone in this fleet we now see Koloff and Stuhlhammer shortening the SAP predicted distance to the lead. They've gone from 60 meters down to 30 meters down. Could be a bit of shift, or it could be what we're seeing with their upwind uh, foiling technique. Keep an eye on that as things progress, and if they're able to hold it, they've gone on a different tack, obviously, than uh, if, the if two we, boats in screen. If we could go to the sailing analytics, we can see the simulation that uh, SAP would be running on the, on the virtual wind field, and we can actually see that the... Uh, this is in German, uh, the omniscient, like the one who knows everything, he would actually bang the left corner based on the wind field. We just have a wind device up here at the windward mark and one down on the starting boat. That's where we interpolate. It's not necessarily the real picture, but uh, that would be currently the theoretically best course. Head to the left. And then downwind, bang the corner on the right. We'll see. <laughs> go back maybe and have a look at some live pictures here looks like Saxton Dabson according to the analytics have pulled ahead of Koloff and Stuhlemmer but uh, the Germans are out of view yeah they've shortened the distance on the Italians uh, they're down at 60 meters behind they're basically sailing in the same bits of water and the 
you know, it's the slow grind out, but they've definitely got a good mode there. We, we see them sailing fairly heeled over, quite a bit of uh, lured hull in the water, so they're getting their steadiness from the hull instead of all from foiling. Uh, but it seems to be working for them. Are they sailing a higher mode? I mean, it must be pretty similar anyways. Yeah. Not so radically different from the guys they're chasing, so nothing will be able to spot, obviously, but sailing well. Dabson coming all the way through the topper fleet into the FX and then into this NACRA. And that very competitive GBR squad coached by Hugh Styles. One of the guys who invented some of these catamarans back in the day. Just taking a look at the overall leaderboard uh, of this race, uh, we can see Ekavari, our uh, second place overall, is down in 10th, and we don't see our overall leader, Tita. He's I've... down in 11th place at the moment. Still leading the overall with that result, though. Okay. That will be his discard. And this is what the overall leaderboard looks right now. If uh, if this race were to finish in these positions, and we see our leader taking his drop race at an 11th, and also Fernando Cavari and Tara Pacheo uh, currently in third taking a drop with their 10th uh, as they finish right now. Still plenty of opportunities for them to carve those numbers down. I think the, uh, uh, of all the fleets, I think that this fleet, you know, this there stands to be such big changes because one one uh, one uh, capsize, one equipment issue, one really bad ley line can mean a, you know instantly getting a, a last place or, or near there. So, we see Pissarro and Frescari keeping a close cover on Saxon and Dabson now. So they had a loose cover on the way out, out on port, and now that they flip back onto starboard, a tight cover, uh, not giving them any room for separation tactically, uh, leaving it to be a, a boat speed and boat handling contest. They were able to win that contest against uh, the Germans on the last downwind, and they're obviously feeling confident in their boat speed. They may have overextended their, uh, or been overstood a tiny bit, because they're sailing a lower angle right now, presumably to get to the windward mark. And, and you yeah. can see the, the boat wake that they went to bear affected them so they had it pretty flat and pretty foily there but now it looks like they're on final approach my gut feeling was that Saxton and Dabson wouldn't make the windward mark but you're you're probably right Ben Bissara and Frascari just overstood quite a bit and yeah, they're uh, comfortable Saxton are gonna make it screen as now. well so we're gonna see Italy three coming around the mark Vito Bissaro and Maele Frascari who said Bissaro, a beach cat sailor for a long time since he could walk, they say. And uh, he switched out crews after his knacker sailing last time around. Getting the kite on. Here come. Let's stay with Saxton Dabson through the hoist. In second place, sailing brilliantly on the beach. They have really good upwind. And there they go. Kites out. They have to get the tack line down now. That's not easy. Get it down. Get it down. And pop. Tack line's on. And now let's go racing. There they go, up on a foil there. I wonder if one of the techniques people will use is to get up on a foil first and then set foiling. Could be. Certainly, I mean, certainly in, in 18 knots, you're not going to need a kite to go foiling at all. You know, I mean, on a reach, probably in 10 knots, you'd be easily foiling. So watching the distance here. About 100 meters in it. But it's a pretty tall order, unless there's a mistake, to close that kind of distance, but there's every opportunity for a mistake here. We've seen you only have to miss your ley line by a tiny little bit uh, to be put under t uh, a lot of pressure. Uh, so the Brits will probably, I don't know if they'll look to be aggressive and jibe away or just do the simple course here and minimize maneuvers. Uh, pretty, They'll be pretty happy with the second place at this stage of the regatta. And then we see another 80 or meters behind uh, Koloff and Stuhlhammer. That left side of the course didn't work out for them or didn't generate anything too much, but a nice position for them as well. They dropped one place on that upwind. Does this fleet have two drop races or just one? Just one drop race for the regatta. Okay. Uh, and this is the final day of the, of the regatta. Um, so sailing a drop race right now uh, would probably, you know, hold. And uh, we'll be into the final tomorrow, three three races short uh, that none of them will be able to be dropped. Interesting how much deeper Saxton are sailing than Bissaro and Frascari. Saxton, Dapson that is, and uh, it does look like they're, they're catching up. Well, I mean, they're only sailing about three quarters of a knot slower and probably 10 degrees lower. So that's a, that's a, that's a good trade-off to make, just like... You know, just like Bundy's uh, uh, two knots for five degrees was a good bargain to make with the devil. 
Yeah, as it flexes back and forth, it could be technique or it could be small puffs they're going actually, in and out of. It's actually more than 10, 10 degrees it was. Uh, 140 and 152 uh, is the angle to the wind of those we two saw, We see Pizarro going for his jibe right there. Yeah. Pretty smooth, nothing nothing too dramatic as they, uh, as they get back out and get foiling on the new jibe again. And well, the angles are really deep, though, compared to the, the conventional boat. Yeah. Oh, we got a... Now we're looking at... I don't know, we're starting to get a little chopped up there. You're looking at Basar Fiskari on the final leg in race 11 of this European Championship for the foiling. Nacra 17, the Italian duo trapping hard off the back of the boat. Wins down a little bit from our first race of the day, but uh, still enough to propel these guys at 18-plus knots. And they look to have a lead that is not going away. The Brits were eroding it for a little bit of time, but now it looks like the Italians have got it under control. Coming up. All right, let's stay with them here. Crew comes in. Skipper comes in. Crew already under the boom. And there's the wheelie, and oh, off they no, come. They so it. not a great jive at all. Look at how, how far they have to come up. 100-degree 100, 100 turn there. And now will this give a chance to Ben Saxon and Katie Dobson coming in? I don't think so. I think they had enough of a lead. They're okay. Sailing brilliantly here, but, the Italians. But you can tell that that's going to become the art. You know, people will manage to fall through at, at low wind if speeds. They I'm, that, if they can get that far through right yeah. now. Yeah. So, uh, There's been a lot of it going on in Lake Garda. <laughs> Under pressure, though, Alan. A different story, for sure. But we do have to recognize that the gold medalist and, uh, and uh, is down there in Lake Garda, as well as uh, the double world champion. The silver medalist isn't even sailing well, today. What are the Germans doing? Uh, that Jesus was, Christ! Oh, this is not a place you want to be with that spinnaker Why up, did guys. They do that? Oh boy, the Germans have blown it. Denmark coming streaking in, and they will get in ahead. Oh, and Koloff and Stuhlhammer sailing a brilliant race have watched it fall apart at the finish. We got to replay that one. <laughs> and uh, uh, what a mistake! A seemingly unforced error, but we don't know what's going on on board either. Uh, look at this too. We've got another battle here. With, uh, is that a Danish or Austrian boat to leeward? I have no idea. But uh, three more coming across the line. Two British boats, I think. That was uh, Ekabari and Pacheo, along with Phillips and Boniface, uh, White and Irwin, and then Norgard and Viborg for, uh, for the Denmark. I think I just saw Darren Bundock and Lisa Darmanen come across the line. Sort of maybe in. That's right, just after Denmark, they were in 11th place. That was Bundock uh, uh, and Darmanin, followed by that. It's the Kiwis, Gemma Jones and Micah Wilkinson. And then our leaders overall, uh, Tita and Banti, have fallen down to 12th place, a uh, result of the dropping. Next up is uh, Rashley and Marmon, uh, Marilyn uh, from GBR. Just coming through. So let's look at that scene once more, what happens then. The Germans come in, let's go bit by bit, and they just put in that jibe way too early. Then they, in the jibe, in the jibe it seems like they put in a, their turbo and go extra fast, and they can't put the boat around, see? They couldn't turn. They couldn't turn, and they went extra fast ah. as, the, as, as both faults were popping up. Ah. And then they did a really hard turn. I'm amazed they could put it around I, like that. I bet you it looked to me like um, the skipper dropped the tiller. 
That's what it looked to me like. Yeah, probably. Cost him one place, not the end of the world. This could have gone a lot worse. I think we may have Ben Saxton, Lisa Dabson here. Do we have volume on those uh, on that, Marcus? Can you guys hear me, uh, Ben? Not yet. Not yet. They're just a. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> We're listening to Ben Saxton, Lisa Dabson. Do we? Oh, she's got me. Is that you, Lisa? Can you hear me? It's Katie. Hi. Oh, I'm very sorry, Katie Dabson. We've been saying your name correctly all day, but not now. Great job out there, you guys. You guys are so fast upwind, Katie. What's the key? I, I, I don't. You know, you've got a nod on everybody else in that last race. Really brilliant sailing. What's the key to that? Uh, I think the key is just keeping an eye on the wind that's coming down and just, uh, yeah, and just making sure that you're completely in control of like what you're doing and everything. Well, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how you decide when to put it on the foils and when to come off the foils. Do you have a, a, a plan for that or do you just sort of, uh, you feel it and do the best you can? Um, it's still pretty new to us, to be honest. We're still unsure of like exactly when you should do it. It's just it's definitely a feel thing at the moment. If you feel like you can foil properly, then go for it because the gains are pretty big when you can do it properly. And the, and the, the differences, the changes uh, are so rapid as well. Um, physically, how challenging is it for you fitness wise? I mean, are the loads super or is it pretty smooth? Um, it's actually, the loads are a lot, a little bit less in this boat when we're foiling because you don't have to pull in that last little bit of main, but it's still pretty physical. It's pretty demanding still. My arms are pretty tired right now, so. I'm going to let you get rest after one more question. It's demanding, it's tough, but it looks really fun. Are you having a good time out there? Yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah, it's, it's really good fun. It's, it's great racing, yeah. It's good. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great next race. Good luck. Thank you. So that was Katie Dabson. I always do that when it really matters. And uh, she really did. I mean, she was she was tired, but the smiles on both her and her skipper's face, that was pretty meaningful. I love to see that. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not always smiles in Olympic class racing. There's a lot of grinding and there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of sacrifice. But when you can just... Have a good old time on the water. There's nothing wrong with that. This is some of the best Olympic sailing I've ever seen. I'm, I, I'm really, really excited about that, that new development. And I think it's going to change quite a lot. You've been around it for a long time. You've seen a lot yeah. of it. This reminds me of when the 49er came up. And I think it's really, really good. And Marcus, look, I mean, we all know how the 49er really changed the world of sailing. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who say the Volvo 70 never would have happened without the 49er. A lot of people who say, you know, some of the other record-breaking boats, some of the way we sail boats now, uh, daggerboard developments, a lot of these things wouldn't have come about had the 49er not come at the right time. Skiff technology changed the world of sailing, and foiling technology is changing the world of multi-hull sailing and monohull sailing. And when you put things in the hands of Olympians, magic things happen don't they why is that i think it's because they turn what they do into an art form it sounds a bit pathetic but that's what they do they work so hard six days a week they train hour by hour just to to uh, improve minute little details and in the end it looks beautiful it doesn't matter if it's a gymnast or a sailor uh, they just turn it into an art and we saw the boats foiling today we didn't see foil through jibes we will see them they just they look beautiful those boats look like they're in control they look beautiful and when something will go wrong it will look very spectacular as well and you will have people waiting for that um i think uh, it, it's 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 great you know from what we've seen so far this is combining the very best of what 49er brought to us almost 20 years ago with a whole level of controllability we never imagined and still don't have in the 49er. The way that uh, Koloff and Stuhlhammer were able to stop on a dime and do a U-turn to make up for a mistake, you know, that can't be done in a 49er. And, or uh, a sea foiling boat, like a sea foil boat would have gone over right there. You know, that was amazing to me. I, I really, it's, a, it's, a, it's astonishing um, 
it's astonishing how that works. So, so let's uh, let's. Um, I think we can. Oh, hi guys, how are you? There goes the bell. I don't know what that means, but I know we do have a great load of racing ahead for you. One more race in the NACRA 17. We've seen it's pretty exciting stuff, and then the 49er men's. And uh, it's, it's a battle with them. We don't see distances like 100 meters between the leaders and the 49er. Um, but uh, that's exciting stuff. I'm still having a blast watching these NACRA 17s. No, I think we've got a leaderboard here after 11 races. Yeah, I mean, even though uh, we're not necessarily saying that the Sailors are chasing this championship so hard, they're all very competitive. We can see how hard they're pushing. Our leader from the last race, Bizarro and Fuscari, had the best of the day so far. They're only up into 10th place now. So after this race... The top ten will make it, or sorry, the top eight will make it to our NACRA 17 final tomorrow. We're only putting eight in the final just to keep the intensity a little lower than it otherwise would be. So we've got a good battle on our hands between the bottom group there. They're all reasonably close on points to get into the final. So imagine uh, right after that eight, imagine a big red line. I don't know if Marcus can draw one, probably not, but uh, imagine a big red line after that eight. That is your cutoff. That is where you don't want to be. That is where you're gone, right? No more racing for them after that. I think, but, um, uh, you know, at the moment, look at how many British teams are in that top eight. It's a, I mean, they, they could literally have half of this final uh, uh, stadium race. Yeah, theater, I mean, it's going to be, race, it's gonna be very difficult for Bizarre and Frascari to make up uh, 16 points. That's the gap they are down. They've got a high drop already, and uh, we can see Rashley and Marmon aren't showing a high drop here. Uh, so I'd say it's, you know, even though they've sailed the best today, that probably isn't going to be enough for them. But Koloff and Stuhlemmer, who we just saw, they just gave up one vital point at the end on an unforced error, but only one because of their recovery. Uh, you know, they're going to be pressing Rashley and Merriman, uh, Mar Merriman, Phipps and Boniface, and also Norgard. And one of those guys is going to stay in, and one of those guys is going to get bounced out. So yep. that's what we will have to follow in the next race. SAP Analytics is going to be a great help with live results. We're going to follow that and see who makes it into the top ten. I'm going to tell you, importantly, though, eight, pay, eight that is. Top, top eight. eight. Pay attention, though, because all the way up to Al Norgard and Nett Viborg, I mean, you know, it's it's close. So 72-65, that's only seven points. Um, so And that's, that's an easy turnaround here. Um, especially when one big mistake means 15 points or, or more. So it should be exciting. Koloff is the one on the bubble. Bizarro, Frascari going to have a whole lot to do to get back into it, but Koloff, Rashley, Phipps, Norgard. Good stuff here, That's boys. That's an exciting bit of action to watch for in this next race. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, hopefully these the coaches on the water are w tuning into this broadcast so they can or they can go online also to NACRA17.org, and the results are automatically updated from the database there as well. Uh, and hopefully these sailors all know what's at stake, and they can uh, plot their strategies accordingly. We're going to be pretty close into the next sequence, and, you know, it's going to be a, a, something important to watch for. All right. So we are getting ready here, just listening for the race committee to give us some updates. But very manageable out there. I mean, plenty of breeze, but uh, the, the super scary stuff has not yet materialized. Hopefully, we'll get another few hours on the water before the heavens really open up. There's one coach that said to me something about being a little worried about lightning, and the other one next to him said, but look at all the boats out here. What are your chances of really getting hit? They're pretty low. Is that the same? Uh, is that the same theory as you don't need to be scared of bears? You just need to be a faster runner than your slowest friend. Exactly. Exactly. Lightning well, does strike twice, though. It does. Yeah, lightning can strike twice. Uh, according to our weather forecast, uh, we're going to be pretty safe here for a while. The the systems weren't meant to be in until two o'clock, so it's only uh, twelve thirty local time here. And uh, so we'll get through the NACRA 17 racing without problem. I can see already the 49er sailors for Gold Fleet are getting ready in the boat park beside us. So they're preparing to go out, and, and we should expect them to hit the race course as soon as this uh, last NACRA 17 race is finished, uh, which is going on schedule. We're six minutes away from the start right now as all the teams uh, continue to adjust their settings. Pretty steady day in terms of the wind speed, so they won't have to do very much out there. Uh, but also, uh, as we heard from... Uh, uh, from the water there. The crews are pretty tired. Their arms are pretty, uh, you know, feeling the workouts they've been given. And uh, they'll be resting up as much as they can before getting into the battle one more time. Yeah, I, the story in the Niners is, is there's lots of really interesting stories in the Niners. But, uh, you know, we, we were wondering what happened to Dylan Fletcher um, yesterday. And it turned out he was run over by his uh, training partner and had a wing damage and trapeze damage. And, uh, and I talked to, talked to um, Finn 
the other crew on the boat that hit them, and uh, and they were pretty disappointed. You know, you don't ever want to crash into your training partner, but uh, but Finn doing quite well, sitting in third place overnight. So good stories uh, in the Niner fleet, and 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 unlike this fleet right now, the tiniest little difference in a 49er finish, and, and you can move huge um, huge places because it's so so tight at the very top. But it is tight right now for that final spot going into the final race before our theater portion of the sailing tomorrow. And that's going to be extremely close, extremely short. Those races are how long? Ten minutes? Ten-minute target time Ten for minutes. all the races Ooh, yesterday, uh, tomorrow. It's going to be intense. <laughs> I like that. It's more fun for us, for sure. I hope it's more fun for you guys back home. But be sure to leave us feedback. This is a good time with a couple minutes left before we uh, go into sequence here. Head over to NACRA 17 Sailing on Facebook, 49ers Sailing on Facebook. We have interviews. We have live uh, live chat and uh, doc walks from this morning and loads of great pictures from our friends at Sailing Energy. There's tons of content for you to browse if you're into Olympic sailing or any of these awesome boats or you're thinking of getting into them. If you have questions for us, send us a message on Facebook or Twitter, Instagram. S leave us a comment on, uh, on one of the things that you're uh, one of the videos and uh, we will do our best to get them answered little update on the on the weather uh if the weather model is correct we're in uh for a swing to the to the right uh in the next uh, 20 minutes and well the next 60 minutes rather and, and then a big swing back to the left and and an in increase of wind around three o'clock uh, up to 18 knots gusting up to 30. so i'm ready you're <laughs> are you ready yeah, i'm ready I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, we're we're high and dry, I'd say. Well, you are. You're sitting all the way in there. I'm out here on the edge of the balcony. I'm not going to be dry for very long if it starts pouring. <laughs> it's got, not like you're going to fall off, Alan. <laughs> I've got an interesting note here from one of our fans online, Dan Jaspers. Wasn't it Kohlhoff of Germany that, quote-unquote, helped the British entry in the Red Bull Youth America's Cup win the event by crashing into the race mark? Marcus, do you, were you following the Youth America's Cup? I didn't Cup? Was follow it, the same, it in that uh, detail. Was it the same guy I'm, who is I'm missing sure. Lord Marks left, right, and center? I'm sure if, we, if Paul makes it in the top eight, um, we can interview him afterwards and ask him. That sounds good. Well, uh, well that was, and that was, uh, folks who may have watched that, that may have been the craziest finish to a major event I've ever seen when, you know, the Kiwis who were looking like an easy win had their entire regatta just destroyed by, uh, by, yeah, Team Germany. And it looks like it was Paul Koloff. Red Bull Youth America's Cup skipper Paul, Paul Kol no, Max Koloff. That's well, his brother. Okay, there we go. So we got to the bottom of it pretty quickly. Uh, good good memory out there. Uh, I fans? Hope, I hope it's right. <laughs> I hope it's right, Alan. It looks like, well, it looks like Paul is on board. Is, uh, on it the was a Youth well. America's Cup, and with Paul having gone to the last Olympics, he's probably aged out of it. So uh, that's just the likelihood. But uh, maybe the Cole Huff trend is not to look down the wind too far and just to go fast. All right, well, thanks for our comment from uh, from Dan, and thanks to all the rest of you who've entered our uh, our contest and given us comments. We are 1.30 to go on board here with, I believe, the British team. Thanks for all the encouraging comments online, too. One thirty to go. So just a reminder, this is the last race of the main series here. Port side has a 40-meter favor uh, right now. Down here we're seeing that Japanese team that did so well at the start of the last race looking to hang out here on the side. At least one Italian boat down here. It looks like both Italian boats down here as well. Well, we need to tune in here to here is the, the group of British boats uh, along with Alan Norgard and also onto Paul Kohlhoff, because only three of those four boats are going to make it into the final tomorrow. Kohlhoff will we'll keep running that, bringing that leader, that top 10 leaderboard up during the race so we can see how, they, you know, how it would be if they finished in that order. Very tight starting here. You know, um, we can see our overall leader uh, just trying to, they're head to wind here, trying to back their jib. To get, to get down and be able to steer, but also having no space to lure it. So a tough spot to start. I'm surprised there aren't more boats starting on port here, uh, especially given the freedom and the speed they can operate with in open water, but we'll see if some boats it'll, tack out. It'll we'll, come. <laughs> no, one, no one's on port yet. They're all lining up for the standard starboard start. Only 16 seconds to go. Lots of room for someone in the Ooh. middle of the fleet to uh, 
to punch forward. Thanks for that, Marcus. A nice Big illustration. Big sag. Japan just squeaking in there and uh, almost getting knocked out and uh, uh, closed out, but but able to just poke their bow and looking for the right side. And Japan will take it. Seen two good starts in a row from the team from the Japanese team. Are we down on wind speed here, Marcus? It doesn't look like the same yeah, acceleration. It's below. It's below ten knots right now. Oh wow! So that clear sky is uh, changing the dynamic a little bit team's not even fully trapping, so they'll be trying to get more power into their sails because 10 knots is certainly enough to power up the sails. Beautiful work, though, from the from the Japanese team working up and uh, and holding the fleet out with both Danish teams out there on the left. And first boat away is... Norgard. No. Well, he's leading... Uh, sorry, for Norgard's the Danish boat we saw having the good start at the top of the screen. Alan's trying to pick up... I'm sorry, the first, the first the boat coast. tacking here on the right side is... The, I think it's Saxton Davison now, that, so it is the ones that we or have the on board White for. Or White Urwin. Is that, it was that uh, yeah. 215, GBR 215? Yeah, 215. That, that is, is White, and, White and Urwin. All right, and they really haven't been much of a factor here. Sort of, sort of mostly sailing around the teens, but they did get a third in the last race thanks to that German, uh, that German fluffery. Start was won by Ericsson and Wiedemeyer heading out to the left-hand side. Far end, here we Let's have it. Let's just try and keep a, keep an eye on Norgard and also the other Brits that are in this battle, Gimson and Rashley and Phipps, and keep, a, keep an eye on if any of them are sailing particularly well or otherwise, because uh, those are the ones that are all trying to make it into the final. Well, I'm going to get in the sailing analytics. I'm going to get the overall rank up, and I'm going to keep a close look on the places eight and nine and ten and at the moment after this start it's rashley merriman who's in eighth kolov stulema still in ninth and pisaro frascari in tenth most of those boats off on the far side of the screen in the distance there you can see and kolov would need to gain four points in order to make it into the top eight from where he is right now so the easiest way to do that is to is to beat rashley by four well, just gain four points from now. Uh, Kolov had a terrible start. Well, yeah, I'd say it was terrible. He's already done has two tacks. Two tacks That's under not his a, you belt know, he, in he this didn't race. get accelerated off the line. Had to do a tack and do a bunch of dips and then do a second tack. So, but it's manageable. Four it, points, gaining four points from where he is right now. It's an 18th, and it's a, oh, it's a discard. Not sure what his last discard mm -hmm. is like. I'll have a look at that. There is a, but one boat there all the way at the top right of the screen. You can see that's uh, that's really launched on the on the off the pin, or and uh, I'm not quite sure who that is yet. We're going to punch it up. Remember, you can head over to sapsailing.com and run that screen alongside your live screen and um, and see exactly who is where and when. Very different upwind settings we can see here. Uh, lots of crews and skippers trapezing fairly high as they try and. Uh, figure out their mode in this much lighter air. Uh, we won't see anyone trying to foil up wind in this, I don't think, although it theoretically would be possible at eight or nine knots, but uh, probably not with the angle that's necessary. And Kolov managed to climb up to 10th place, and that would put him in the top eight. It's going to be a really tight battle with uh, Rashley and Merrimont for the, for the uh, medal, medal race final. They're really tied at the moment. Let's wow. look at. It's Ericsson and uh, and and Wiedemeyer that are that, that's that boat out all the way on the left, and they're moving pretty well. But the speed's way down. We're down into we're down to ten, eight, even maybe eight knots of wind right now. Look at how light it is. Certainly no foiling going on now. Barely any trapezing going on now. That's that lighter, or the uh, brightness in the sky. It's taken uh, the systems just eased off a little bit and uh, brought us a tough contrast to film through, but also affected the teams dramatically. They'll uh, be looking to adjust their course settings to get as much power into the boats as possible right now. But uh, like you say, uh, you know, two, two hulls in the water, um, lo boat sitting on the edge, not even trapezing, and, you know, Question is Figuring who, out how to do that, manage this transition the best will be important. And the other thing that will be important is any uh, amount of puff will make that much difference. A, a one-knot difference is now 20% instead of 10%. Uh, we, could, we could very well see a, a single race where we see 20-knot foiling, and then, <laughs> then we see a leg where the spinnakers come out of point. If the weather model is correct, anybody heading out to the left-hand side at the moment is in danger because there is strong right-hand shift predicted for, for the next hour. 
So, not a good position to be in, possibly, uh, for Koloff at the moment, who's, who's gone pretty far left. And Norgard had a good start at the pin end of the line. Did he continue left, or has he come back? He has gone left. He's, uh, matter of fact, he's really close to Koloff on the left-hand side. Uh, I can't see the shift to, uh, to the right yet. A little bit, maybe, just edging up from 175 to 180 degrees at the moment, but it's not, not a big swing yet. It's Rashley all the way out on the right, I think. Yep, so Rashley working hard on the right. And he'll want to maintain that gold fleet position. We can see here in the center of the screen, Italy. Tita Banti on three, the right as well. 370. Uh, Tita Banti, our overall leaders, uh, heading right early. That's in a great spot. Uh, so they're looking to extend their lead and, and lock things up as much as possible before the final tomorrow. Great series from them, uh, having never sailed in the NACRA 17 before. Yeah, and, did they uh, have a lot of, very well. Did they have a lot of training time, Ben? Uh, the same as everyone else. So they got a, a week in in the Netherlands, and then they got their boats three weeks ago. So, uh, you know, th these indications aren't any more than people can sail well and, and have a feel for things in terms of the overall. But, you know, for a guy switching classes, he's got to feel really good about where they are. We're also watching Gemma Jones and Micah Wilkinson pop into the leaderboard. They're well out on the left side, almost at the ley line, actually. So maybe there's something special in it over there. But speeds, you can see speeds at 7. I'm looking at him on the tracker, seven knots, eight knots, um, nothing special. I think one little puff and everything's going to change. Obviously, you can see that the leverage changing quite a bit. So Tita Banti all the way on the right, Gemma Jones, Michael Wilkinson all the way on the left, and they will now converge as we head to the top mark on the first leg of the last race before the eliminator, before those top eight advance and the rest are cast aside. Tita Banti seem pretty powered up right now, finally. Maybe in the best wind on the course right now. Doing about eight knots. Yeah, here we go. So full trapping, got the windward heel, go, or the one hull uh, flying. That's a lot better look than we had a few minutes ago. Look at this leverage, though. Talk about lateral separation. Got ley line on the right, and then there's about five boats close to the ley line on the left. If they finished right now like this, it would be Koloff and Stuhlammer knocked off, and Phipps and Boniface would advance, and Rashley would move all the way up to uh, to fifth place. So all four boats we talked about in terms of needing to sail well are all sailing some of their worst races of the series. We've got two drops showing up, uh, and an 18 and a 16, uh, but that also means there's lots of room to move forward. So this is going to stay exciting the whole time. With Tita and Banti leading, big lead going into the medal races with 15 points, but close, uh, very close point gaps behind that for places two, three, and four. And the medal races, are they worth the same amount as these races here? Yeah, they're scored the same, except obviously there's only 10 boats, so you can only eight, get up eight. to uh, eight boats. So you can only get up to eight points. Uh, so if you look at that, uh, math three times eight is 24 minus one for the, all the winners you take. So there's only a 21 point uh, total differential you can score. Uh, so a 15 point lead heading into that is almost wrapped up. Are you surprised to see um, Gemma Jones not uh, not doing her usual usual sort of top performance, or just new crew? I, I don't know what to say if uh, if the word is surprised or not because it's a new it's a new beginning and I and uh, but you know someone who has finished fourth at the last Olympics it is a bit surprising that they haven't extended themselves and and uh, and then really had too many great races either. But by the same token, we don't know what else she's been doing and how much she's been concentrating on it. And like you said, it is a new crew uh, with Jason Saunders, her regular crew, off doing uh, the Tour de France of Wall. So, oh, we see, we see some spinnakers on the upwind. <laughs> wow. It, you know, that it's pretty Gemma windy Jones. right now. Uh, we can see Italy 370, uh, our overall leaders, with, uh, without their spinnaker up. And they're sailing, you know, they're double trapping. And then on the far side of the course, we see guys uh, trying to use the Code Zero upwind. I Are they know. that flat? I don't they know. They are very flat. But they you can see, look, you can see the luff shaking around. You can see that it's yeah. it's impossible to get the kind of luff tension you really need for it to be efficient, but it's still powerful. So even if it's draggy, the power, you know, may, may be there, maybe not. Look at the difference in angle, though. I it's, love early days where everybody does experiments. It's great stuff. It really is. It's so much fun.
We can see the Italians. They're in a good puff right now. Yeah, they certainly don't want to have a spinnaker up right now. No, they're looking pretty good. Uh, it they're is one of the already. back markets. It is. It is one of the back markers who's got their spinnaker up. So it could be a bit of desperation or a bit, a bit of a bit of inspiration. Looks like Erickson and, and uh, Vedemar are coming in from the left there, just in front of the bow of uh, Tita and Banti. And there are there are four. The biggest fleet here is British boats, and there's four of or five of them, I think. Uh, no, four, five, five of them, I think. And so four of them still sitting on that top eight leaderboard. But uh, Tita and Banti are proving that none of the previous week's action has been a fluke. They really are commanding this race. Again, they're half a knot faster, and they covered uh, roughly 100 meters extra distance compared to the second place boat at Javari and Pacheco. So coming around the mark they go, Ruggeri Tita and Banti. And the breeze seems to have stabilized a little bit. It's not quite as light as it was, so it should be a simple hoist. Crew comes in. Round they go. Halyard up. Tack down. Sheet on. And let's get out of here. So nice stuff for that. And um, we're looking at Tita and Banti. We don't know where that eighth, ninth position are. But here they go for the jibe. And the spinnaker's through. And the spinnaker is on center line. It's not, isn't it? It's not just a, it's a bit of a, 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 an illusion going on right here. This is the only camera we can show you right now because these boats have left our uh, our camera boat behind and the drone's coming in for a battery change. <laughs> there we go. But you can see it's, it's pretty hard to keep up. And that's a stabilized lens you're watching. And it's bouncing around because they're going about 20 knots trying to catch these other boats. It ain't easy having done that job before a few times. Tita in the lead there. There's another cruising boat hanging out coming. Oh, that's not. Is that our leader? Yeah, that's the race leader. And then uh, and that's the Erickson Vedemeyer behind. But where is. Um, oh, nice jibe. Very nice jibe. Wow. There. That was pretty. So, with a little less speed, uh, they've got a tiny bit more control here. They're actually able to uh, foil jibe better. Maybe we can have a look. There we go. Thank you, Marcus. This is the battle for uh, place. I, I sorted these by place five to nine. Uh, Kulov Stulem are currently uh, out of the medal races by uh, five points. They're on 84 at the moment, uh, jumping around a little bit, 78, six points right now. So they've got a bit of catching up to do in order to make it into the medal race. Uh, Rashley Merriman dropped down to ninth. Um, so still safely in. But they were up to fifth already during this race. And remember when we when we first looked at this group, they were down in the sort of 18, 16, 12 range. All those boats have moved up except for Norgard, who's dropped back to 18th place. Um, so some of that runway in terms of the easier boats to pick up is gone, and this is actually solidifying a little bit. They're already halfway down the first run. Koloff is up here. They, they are on the attack. They they jibed early. I think, you know, if, if, if they so, get lucky, that right-hand shift is going to come in. That's going to favor them uh, jibing early. Um, but they do have have some catching up to do in order to make it into the medal race. It's 84 points to uh, 77 right now. Well, and they're sailing very fast. Um, as we can see, they're sailing pretty fast out there on the far side of the course and just trying to trying to split with everyone else, basically. I mean, that's their only option at this point. This is, uh, is this our final leg? No, this is our no, first down one. This is our first down. This is leg so we got two. a lot of sailing left to go in this race, especially in the lighter conditions, but uh, these is our overall leaders and our leaders of the race here, and we can start to see why they've extended themselves throughout the regatta. Very smooth, very consistent, getting the big things right and the little things right. Any insights, Ben, why they're in such a class of their own? I wish I could offer something, but 
you know, we could even see by some of their foiling, um, just we saw that jibe just earlier, and we also saw uh, some of the foiling that we've, they've put on the web. They are one of the teams that seem to be able to be very smooth on the foils, even in maneuvers. We've seen them foil set, we've seen them foil jibe, and uh, surely that's part of the equation. Tita Banti, and look at the, the, the second place alternating between Ericsson and Bissaro. And uh, it, it'd be a shame for, for Pissarro not to make it in because they really look great in this breeze. But uh, we have had a couple of light air days, and you got to be able to sail these things in everything, don't you? Yeah, and wow, already up at uh, that's the gate. Oh, no, that's the lured mark. Wow, they sail the boats. Uh, oh, he's going to try a spinner go. on the upwind. There you go. Just dig in deep and sheet as hard as he can. And uh, way, way easier on the crew than dropping the spinnaker, right? It sure is. And also, you know, this is a technique that a lot of teams, I think, will use no matter what to get away from any pack. Uh, and then, you know, it's pretty, you get, get a lot of leverage pretty quick when you're the leader, but also, you know, very smooth rounding. We saw how little they slow down or anything, able to carve a very tight pack. And I wonder if that'll set the trend for everyone else as well. Yana, Yana Jarvanen showed me his hands from doing the uh, the spinnaker upwind yesterday, and I mean they are chewed. And his hands, he's got you know he's a he's a he's a pro sailor. He's got uh, calluses all over everything, but they were destroyed. He looked like he just did a Southern Ocean leg on the uh, the Volvo Ocean race. Well, we're about to see our first disagreement in how to sail upwind here. <laughs> as uh, this is Jan Eriksson takes down his spinnaker to sail upwind with uh, without it, and, and uh, Saxon goes around the outside with the spinnaker on. You saw how he gained about four boat lengths just by not having to take down his spinnaker. So that's one thing. And he gets his clear air, so even just tactically, even if he were to drop now, he's ahead um, of what Jan Eriksson did with the with the normal drop. So there's got to be something in it, and whether or not it proves to be the better VMG overall, I guess we don't know yet. Certainly doesn't look too bad right now from where we're sitting. I look, it's all about crossovers, and like, and you know, we, you start to look at regattas and say, well, what's that regatta likely to do? Should we be heavier? Should we be lighter? You know, um, there's a lot of new tactics and strategy and big big uh, sort of big picture overall strategy that that this brings into it this is a it's a very cool development but you look at the look at the difference in angles so yes they're going fast forward but look at how well um the germans are holding inside them yeah, it's spectacular to have the spinnaker up. It doesn't seem to be such a differential and advantage. I mean, the, those here. two are holding steady right now. And this, I think, I think this sort of nine, nine, ten knots is is definitely going to be tough, unless you really want to go that way, because you still have to drop it if you're going to get back into it and tack. And if we can go back to the onboard shot of Saxon, uh, we can see if they've dropped off any any at all in terms of the height. But it doesn't look like it from this perspective. It looks like they're able to track pretty darn steady. Just as high, just as high as the boat without a spinnaker. Yeah, I mean you can see. So even though you'd think they'd have to bear off and sail lower, they're not at all. They're keeping the same lane. And that's not, they're not going much faster, but yep. a little bit. And and that's in part because you can see all the drag coming from that flapping luff on that spinnaker. You know, only the back half of the spinnaker is really working. That's all they need to have the power, but also it's adding drag, which is uh, which which cuts into the speed. And now we see them actually pinching off the Germans, so that power is <laughs> getting gaining some them some efficiency on their foil, Look possibly. At that. So they're able. Now to, they're picking up. Yeah. Now they're going to drop it. Yeah. Well, it certainly did what they wanted uh, for the first bit of the leg. That was a great tool. Look, they told us over and over again. It's a tactical tool. It's not necessarily something you're going to use all the time. But you know, whether it's whether it's foiling, whether it's the spinnaker, these are new tools that you know other classes might not really have to play with. You don't see 49ers sailing with spinnakers upwind. Oh, if it's a if it's that light, it's a, it's an <laughs> ugly one. Yeah, but that was that was great. You know, it adds it really adds something to the tactics of the sailing. So beautiful, beautiful, smart sailing from Ruggie Tita and Banty. And uh, Vedemeyer in that exchange, sort of letting Saxton and Katie Dabson get away. And uh, we see Saxton now. He's pretty far leveraged to the right, uh, which is the side we think if there's a risk of a shift, it'll go to. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the fleet's farther to the left. And uh, I, we don't, we can't necessarily guarantee it, but it doesn't look like any of the other boats still have their spinnakers up anymore. So, like you said, used as a tool, not necessarily a VMG piece. Also, the crews might be begging for a break. Uh, yeah, that, so it's could, it, that negotiation could be part of it. Well, that could be a factor for sure, especially uh, nearing the end of the regatta for some of these teams. But you can also see that those streaks starting to push back in, so the breeze starting to come back in, and maybe we're we're seeing the beginnings of that big breeze build that we're going to see the uh, in the next hour or two. 
Um, so definitely plenty of breeze, double trapping without spinnakers now. That means 10 to 12 knots around at least, um, and probably more up in that next next uh, wind line. So who's going to get to that, that wind line first? The Italians certainly will get there before Saxton and Dabson. Who, and right now it looks like uh, Saxton Dabson showing... A small lead. And we also see Phipps and Boniface uh, moving up into fourth. That They need this race to surge out of that danger zone, and here's the danger zone, just checking back in on the guys trying to make it into the gold fleet. Right now, just like we saw in the downwind, it's Rashley and Cole Hoff in the most danger there. Uh, Rashley's going to have to keep up in tenth, and Cole Hoff's going to try and Gotta have to pull something off to gain four places. It is shifting a little bit to the right on the right hand side, or he is just going very, very low. Uh, looks like it because bo boat above them, Jones and Wilkinson, they didn't bear away. So uh, I think these guys are running out of runway to make it into the final. I like how the lead just keeps alternating back and forth between the boat right there at the top. You can see the Italian boat and uh, this boat here, Saxton Dabson. Both of, both of these teams having really come on in the past couple, three days, both in the light air and now in the heavier stuff. And uh, we're seeing who's getting a handle on this boat first. I mean, that's, that's not necessarily going to determine who goes to Tokyo and who comes home with a medal, but it's certainly going to determine who wins these early events. And uh, a little head start now could mean a lot later. So looking at Ben Saxton, Katie Dabson, very clean, very smooth, and they're in the new puff now. That's that wind line we saw from overhead. Nice speed on for them right now, and maybe they'll try and flatten it out now and start to work the really fast mode. But I think, I think they'll be happy just to, to uh, maintain position and uh, make sure to have a bit of a loose cover. And rounding the final mark of this portion of the regatta, Ben Saxton, Katie Dabson, easy lead. I don't know what happened to Tita and Banty. They were alternating back and forth, I guess, the, that big puff finally. It's actually going to be close here for second and third. Erickson Vedemeyer to Leward, Tita and Banty to Windward, and they're going to just squeak in ahead on the foils around the top mark yeah there's just a single top mark here because there's been a change of course so the no spread no spreader mark like we saw and very close pass there and by the way the shift to the right is kicking in now and the wind is picking up it is happening but it's happening a little bit too late for kolhoff who headed out to the right hand side will they benefit enough they're up actually the gap got closer it's only two points between rashley and cool off right oh, now. Oh wow! Oh wow! This it could is come getting down close. To it. We've got our. We've asked our drone pilot to try and try and isolate Koloff and uh, Rashley for this downwind. So hopefully we'll be able to watch. We see <laughs> huge different. Oh, we got a tack at the windward mark oh. and almost a stop. As uh, so that's going to change the numbers. That boat there is going to end up right in the mix with uh, with the battle for the overall. Uh, as someone stuck on the windward mark, we see there that's. Rashley's coming Rashley's, in. Was that Rashley who just rounded, or was Rashley's that? just coming up to the mark? I think now. I think okay. that's him stuck on the mark. Is that him? No, it's not. That's an Italian okay. boat. That's this. Uh, this I think is Rashley right here. Okay, and we've got Rashley and Kolhoff one, uh, one after the other for the downwind. Oof. So we're going to be able to try and keep an eye that's on that. That's a nice battle on those two. Let's stay how there. Many, how many oh, points do we have? Kolhoff jibed. Kolhoff nice jibes. move. Smart move. Yeah, Wind is going to the he right. Need, he, knew, he knows, he, and you said it's building to the right, too. You know, so I'm not sure if it's building to the right. So overall, I can see the wind is picked up by uh, probably two knots. We're up 12 knots now. So we should see foiling here. Let's so, just stick so on. So the boat on the far end, that is uh, Rashley. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I believe so. And this boat in the foreground, that is Kolhoff. I believe it's. I believe you're right. I'm not 100% positive, but what you can't see just to the right is um, is Darren Bundock and Lisa Darmanin kind of just just to windward. What of we, Cole, uh, Cole you know, Koloff's in a great spot here. If we think it's building breeze to the right, because not only has he got separation, he needs it. He needs a chance to pass four boats, but he also has a bunch of boats off to the far right, uh, to the far side there. Uh, so he's actually got a chance here to leapfrog and, and w win his way into the final. And it's just two points right now between him and Rashley and Merriman. So oh, Koloff and Stulema in a him. really good position. Surprising. Yeah, true. It, 
if that indeed was Rashley who rounded just ahead, I'm super surprised that Rashley didn't jibe off with him. But maybe he's not aware. Maybe they're not aware of the points well, out on the don't, water. Right? Don't, don't, they, they can't do the scores from the th- two races. Most that of these guys before. can though. Most look how close it is. Look, look how glo- close it is. This is between eighth and ninth right now. We're talking about the battle between Rashley and Kohlhoff, along with their crews, Merriman and Stuhlhammer. They're only one point apart right now. It only takes another pass. Uh, or another two passes for Kohlhoff to win his way into the final. And tons of leverage right now. He's going he... for his jibe. Let's see how good a jibe he can do. Oh, into the... Not too bad, though. Let's see how quickly they can accelerate. They've the gone... Wind, the wind has not swung any further since the wind went mark rounding, so nothing they... Where's that drone? This is the finish line, so we're seeing our... Uh, Top boats go through the finish. There isn't much time left on this downwind. Marcus, how many boats are left to pass? Is it going to? They're there a tied chance? now. They're tied. The, eighty-one and eighty-one points. They're tied, and that would put Rashley. The tie is currently broken in the favor of Rashley. So he needs one more boat in it. That's all it takes. Rashley's approaching now. We get this. It's, this should be the next couple I think boats. Kohlhoff, the Kohlhoff's definitely ahead of him right now. You're going to see Kohlhoff coming in from. I think that's him. That's, that's him right Kohlhoff there. Yeah, he's ahead. The he's next boat is, is the next boat Rashley. Or do we have that one is more? not Rashley. No. So he's that got, is he's, Austria's Ajax. So he's only got one more uh, bit of air. If Kohlhoff misses this leeward mark. It's not going to be him. That's Chris Rashley. Oh, no. no, no, it's Darren Bundock, and then Rashley. Is that enough? Will that get get uh, Kohlhoff into the final? I don't know. This well, is the, super close. In the analytics, Rashley has just finished, and he's on 80 points, and Kolov is on 81. So, wow. It was just about enough. Looks like it. No change happening anymore. Nope. It looks settled. Bear in mind, <laughs> preliminary protests, results. Protests, protests could, could, could be happen. Pending. That's right. But at these the are moment, not preliminary. It's 80 and 81. Yeah. These are not preliminary. These are non-official results. Exactly. <laughs> non-official. And the timing on the screen is not official timing, folks, if you're watching at home and you want to protest somebody. But they're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, that was an exciting finish um, to a series, and uh, we'll see if some, some stuff gets played out in the night tonight. Maybe we can talk to, um, to Chris Rashley. Yeah, it maybe would be interesting can, to know see, if he knows how close he is. Maybe we can see if uh, they can get the interview after Chris Rashley, but let's, uh, let's go ahead to the overall results in this fleet, have a look at how it shook down after the first part of the regatta. Yeah, that was some dramatic stuff. So what we're going to be looking at next is a leaderboard uh, as they head into the final series. As again, the, uh, the top eight will be into the final series of three more races tomorrow, which is um, going to be in the theater. We predict very strong wins tomorrow, um, challenging, these, challenging these guys right at the top mark. And, you know, it's a good lead for Tita and Banti as we look at the top of the field, 41 points, but by no means sealed. Uh, uh, you know, a, a first versus an eighth in the very first race, and they're almost tied. Uh, and we see Christensen and Lubeck uh, having a fantastic day today. Two, three, four on the day. They'll be thrilled. Yeah, and, and you know, they've sort of quietly been uh, been pushing their way up the leaderboard until the breeze came on, and now you can tell they love it. They, they're, they're happy to play around in this stuff. And uh, Danes typically are okay with a little bit of breeze, but Ben Sa- or, uh, Saxton and Dabson really performing brilliantly other than one race, to, uh, you know. Rashley's off the course as well. All right, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out later. But uh, Fernando Ecavari having a bit of a tougher time in the breeze, but staying consistent um, and maintaining that fourth place, just two points out of the uh, podium places. Gimson, Burnett, um, again, they were phenomenal in the light air uh, despite the, the, the penalty points they picked up for safety violation, but uh, still staying in touch with the leaders. About 22 points out of the lead. Phipps Boniface uh, a little bit further back with a nice battle, though, for that 6-7-8 spot. Yeah, I mean, so there's obviously just a few teams, sorry, uh, l- l- aiming at the podium, then other teams, uh, sorry, aiming for the win, and then a few more teams aiming for the podium. You know, just getting on the podium at a European championship will be worth quite a bit. This is the second uh, page of the scoring. Right. So these are, again, the teams that won't be likely to make it through till tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we see some, some nice consistent scores here, teams figuring things out. You know, so at the, I'm just looking at 18th place, Ericsson and Weidmeyer finishing on a third. You know, they'll be happy with that. First regatta as a team in this foiling neck for 17, getting a good race to finish. So they'll be heading to the bar with smiles on their face. Uh, likewise with Jones and Wilkinson at the top there from, uh, uh, you know, Gemma and Micah probably would have been more ambitious for this in 11th place. But uh, get a fifth to finish out and lick their wounds and start again.
Well, I think that might have been actually Jason Waterhouse on the helm that last uh, that last oh. race. Um, that's what Darren told me they were going to they were going to switch him in for the last race. Not sure he actually took it, but but interestingly, Waterhouse or uh, whoever that was, the Australian team rounded behind uh, the Germans, Kohlhoff, and actually rolled them, and that's what what created that that last second possibility for Kohlhoff to uh, uh, to get in. But um, it's an interesting one, boy. So just a reminder, up next is three uh, 49er Gold Fleet races. Uh, same, the same stakes are up uh, up for grabs as have been in the Snacker 17 racing. The top 10 from the 49er Gold Fleet will make it into the final tomorrow. And again, the uh, uh, breeze is scheduled for tomorrow. And right now we've got, you know, Critical races here. Critical races. We saw teams go from uh, from first to tenth yesterday. The same thing in reverse can happen today, or can continue. Now, what happens, Ben, if we can't get any racing? If we get forty knots and uh, and hailstorms and lightning, and we just can't get out on the water at all? If we can't get on the out on the water, the regatta just ends. I mean, we've already had tons of races, so uh, the, the the final still stands. That's how how all of racing is. And uh, but I do expect we'll get racing tomorrow. Um, the teams we're asking to go sailing are the very best, and they can handle you know right at the top limit. Uh, we'll see. The various forecasts seem to think we'll get in the 22 knot range if we keep the flat wa- if we keep it offshore with flat water should be reasonable. The forecast we get is for a lighthouse out there. You can actually see it from here. It's way out in the bay. T- uh, 15, 20 meters high. Uh, it's a little stronger there, and we're at the wind shadow from, from the coast. It's going to be okay. Flat water, they're going to manage. All right, so it'll be very exciting. Well, the nicest thing about those conditions with the offshore is um, is that you get the big puff. So maybe it's 20 knots and flat water, but then you get the big stuff occasionally dropping down, and that's when you know that's when the white knuckles start, start going off, and that's when you start to see water vaporizing off the bows of these boats and pitch poles and... There's nothing more fun in the world. <laughs> so we'll take I'm a look. Looking at, forward to it. We'll take, a, we'll take a look at the leaderboard here of uh, what the 49er teams are, are are racing today and what positions they're in. Uh, remind you of what you witnessed yesterday to get to this point. Um, at the very top, we're looking at Gilmore and Turner. We should also just explain briefly what's going on with this scoreboard here. We're showing a few qualifying races. Those have been downgraded to be worth half points, and then. F1, F2, F3, those are the first three Gold Fleet races at the top. Uh, so that's what you're looking at here. And on the far right column is the sum. That's the points they are carrying right now. That's the first Greek letter I've seen in a broadcast in a long time. I like it. I like it. Plotsy and Tesse doing really well. But, you know, Gilmore and Turner, light air, heavy air, they've just been performing. And uh, they're loose right now. They're in a great mood. I, I mean, they feel there's no injuries. I think their training has been solid. Both of them have stayed very fresh in other classes, doing lots of tr- cross-training as well as drilling in the Niner. So it's not a huge surprise to see them up here. But they're, um, I'd say they're, they're in the right frame of mind to take this European championship. Plotsy and Tesse uh, really performing well, having a little bit of inconsistent results, but solid, and uh, they've certainly been around for a while. Peters and Sterrett, that's why I talked to you about before, having that crash with uh, former regatta leader Dylan Fletcher um, and, uh, and his crew. And uh, so they, they benefited uh, a lot by, you know, by that incident, and, um, and they're sitting just outside second place. Yeah, down the list here, we just uh, go through, and we can see the other of note on this list is Fletcher and Bithill fell from first overall with a poor race yesterday down to uh, tied for seventh. They'll be looking to reverse that today. And if we can, we'll take a look at the second screen and just get everyone's names up on board so we can see, because uh, certainly the, there's plenty of opportunity for the guys on this screen to, to have a good day and make it into the final and maybe even contend. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, of everybody out here, uh, by, by the way, the Alonzo brothers there, uh, ESP46, also crashed into Dylan Fletcher Scott so on the same race. So uh, he had a terrible day. But I think the big, the big surprise for me, probably Diego Botin and, uh, and Iago Lopez, all the way down in 15th place, despite having, I mean, they, they got third at European Championships last year, and they've been con- consistent performers i talked to dave o'connor also he would be well up in the fleet if not for that ufd but he had a good good attitude on his face and as you told me he would would he still feels really good about their regatta their speed their ability uh to perform in this fleet and then finally uh Prisbatek and kolodinski uh fourth at last year's europeans having a disappointing week so far but like we said pay attention to that right hand column the sum column 
The points are very close. You, there's a 20-point swing in every race. We've got three of them today. So that's a 57 points that can be gained uh, at the absolute maximum today, and the points are much closer than that. So we'll expect this leaderboard to mix up quite a bit. We're going to score one drop race out of the six races in total between the finals. So uh, also we'll pay attention to that. Some guys will be dropping UFDs, for example. That'll help their scores. Uh, and we'll... Be here to tell you the story. We expect the breeze to kick up a little bit as this as this afternoon progresses. Possible big storms in an hour from now. We're at five minutes past one. Uh, between two and five today could be some big weather, and we've already seen the forecast be right on so far. And, Ben, if you're stuck on that page two that we just looked at at the end of today, you're done, right? That's right. Only the top ten after today will make it into the theater final tomorrow. Now, do the rest of them go out and uh, – because there's so many sailors here. Do the rest of them all go out and watch it, or they hang out in the in the, the beer hall and watch it on the TV? What's the pr pr process? We, we send them out racing tomorrow. So everyone races two races tomorrow from 10 a.m., and then they come in and uh, to pull down their sails, go out and check out the final, and then everyone can derig together and uh, have a nice party to, tomorrow night. That's that's very good that you do that. At the World Cup, it's kind of sad when, you know, the night before the medal races, people leave. Uh, something that I believe needs to change. I think it's very good that people stay here until Friday, celebrate, and, and, and have a final sail. Yeah, they all, you know, people spend a lot of money to come here to sail and sail in proper competition. Uh, we've got all the race officers, all the officials, everything we need to go racing, so we go racing. I don't mind that at all, though I did want to try and get, a, get, a, get on a trapeze at some point here and go play. I mean, I can't look at these knackers and not want to get on one. You must have too, a ride. right? Let's have a ride. Let's have a ride. <laughs> I don't know if him and I will both stay on the boat without sinking it. Alan, you know, you. as we look out of our broadcast studio, we can see all the full foilers coming into port. They've got everything rigged. Just run down and go for it. Just run the, in my Are jeans. you busy? I'm, Are you busy? No, I don't have anything to do. I mean, come on. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think the start the way, is in five minutes, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, Four by minutes. the way, thank you all for watching and for sharing this broadcast. We've got great numbers. I think fifteen, twenty thousand actual uh, views on the YouTube platforms over over the overnight and all over the different streams, and well as I think reaching hundreds of thousands via Facebook. So thank you so much. Please continue to mash that like button and share it with your friends. And, yes, uh, if we're entertaining you, make sure you can share that experience. Well, look, the more people that you that watch it right now, the more likely we are to be able to bring this same uh, 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 broadcast to you all over the world, or better, because every every you know every few thousand more that you get means maybe a little bit more advertising or sponsorship revenue, or, or drone or partner revenue, and that means another drone or another on water camera. And that's how broadcast works. You know, whatever you can put into it, you just get more stuff. Um, and and, uh, and that's what I like. And we can thank our sponsors for this event, Adidas, uh, also SAP, and Spinnaker Watches. Thanks for all for those three companies, especially for making it happen. Because, right, you, uh, that does make a difference. You only have a couple and a half hours left to win a $200 gift certificate toward one of these Spinnaker Watches. Take a picture of you, your family, your friends watching our broadcast. Post it on our social media channels and you will get a chance to win a $200 uh, uh, watch. We already got some great ones already and we'll, we'll put them up on Facebook, but you can see them with the hashtag Spinnaker Watches 49er. Two minutes and 30 to go. Okay, we are on board with Peters and Starrett and uh, we've been talking about them a lot. I wonder if you can see the damage to the wing bar. They did. I'm sure they fixed it or put in a new wing bar. That, that GBR team pretty well equipped. But um, young and, uh, and hardworking and fit is the way you can describe a lot of these fleets, especially when they get up to this level. There are not a lot of 50-year-olds racing around on 49ers. But uh, we are just now at two minutes to go. Wind is up in the 12 knot range. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been pretty stable here for the last 20 minutes or so after we had that kind of calm uh, period, Marcus. And I think we're all just kind of waiting, holding our breath, waiting for the big stuff to come. But, like, as you know very well, I love it. I can't get enough of it. U flag is up. And who do we have all the way over here? I see at least one set of poles. I'll find out where the series leaders are starting. Let's have a look where Gilmore and Turner are, are, are lining up. They're, they're up at the boat end. Pin end does look favored, though. 
Uh, Italians, Plazzi and Tesi are in the middle, still searching for a gap, and Peters and Sterrett, currently overall third, uh, are also lining up in the middle of the line. I want to apologize to you folks who are over on 49er.org or Nacker17.org trying to get results. It looks like uh, we may have blown up the website a little bit. Maybe there's too many tens of thousands of you clicking at the same time. But uh, look at how they hold their lanes here. Just hanging out, doing their things. 184, Dave O'Connor, Harry Morton having to bail out a little bit. Nope, they're back. Quick tack in. 30 seconds to go. They're lining up just to windward of 202. That's Mengdorfer and Spranger, the performer, the standouts from yesterday. And Slight uh, sag in the line. There's definitely some sag, but they move a long way here in the last 10 seconds. And making a last-second dive there is GBR3. That is Fletcher Scott Bethel. I've got my money on those guys today. They're due for a great performance. And uh, Fletcher Bethel, there they go, and bang. Start is away. Clean and start. Looks like a clean start. No hicks like up. Looks like um, so. Bithell and uh, Bithell and Fletcher Scott, they own that windward position. Beautiful, beautiful start. They waited to the last second to spring that trap, and they are sitting there. We're getting ready to roll over O'Connor. O'Connor gets about to get rolled. He'll have to get out. And, Alonso uh, Brothers in the fourth ground head out to port. So Spanish uh, Alonso's out to the right first. Good stuff here on board here. Plotzi and Tetsi, second place going into this round. They started in the middle. Watch the technique. You know, so you see upwind, you know, work keeping your weight forward, keeping your body out, trying being as straight as you possibly can. Maybe a little tiny bit of ooching on the waves or at least keeping the boat's bow in the water. Now, who won the start? Uh, looks like Bill Stein and Hussle, who started at... Let me zoom out here in the analytics a little bit. Um, Bill Stein and Hussle started at the pin end, and Pritchpatek and Kalajinski, um, they, they both did a really good start. Question is, can they head out to the right side? I think we still have the same dynamic. A right-hand shift could come in. We also have a little bit of a puff at the middle right of the course, just looking out from the balcony here. It is, it's Matthew Frey we're looking at there, the French flag, and, uh, and Clement. Look at how far to, I mean, they really put the bow down, did the, the Alonso brothers. Matthew Frey there has really performed well since, uh, since the Gold Fleet splits. His countrymen, not so well. Fisher and Jovan haven't had a great job, of, a great time of it, but Frey just the lure of the Danish boat there. Lubeck and Hoffman who had a couple of really solid races yesterday and one bad one, I think. Bit of a lane in the background. We can see that. There's a darker patch there. Looks a little bit softer in the foreground. I don't know how. I mean, I, it looks like those the, the boats on the far end should start to be extending in that little bit of extra pressure, but I'm not sure if they have a bad shift there, too. There's Lubeck there with the Danish flag. But uh, Bithel up to windward and that's ita 88 is uh is viconti and tony who didn't have a great day yesterday but up until then we're doing very well leaders still on the left hand side of the course yeah i mean they're in more pressure for sure there's no question that there's a darker patch on the water over there but uh maybe these guys are going to go for some shift alonzo really has the bow down he still has the bow down I Maybe mean, he's just looking for something all the way out on the right. I want to get to ley line fast. <laughs> yeah, he is going lower. He lost like 20 meters just going deep there. I, I think it might just that. be pressure. And there, there is a bend towards the right. The wind is shifting to the, toward the, the right. If we could uh, have a quick s switch to the SAP sailing analytics, I can, I can show it. Um, cut over here. This is where the bend happened big shift you can see it in all of them and it's bigger on the rightmost boat if you look at the right yeah, boat. i think he just went that's alonzo he just went deep compared to the other guys the whole time yeah okay fair enough fair okay. enough let's go back to live and you can see the shift on the wind strip down at the bottom of the screen yep. as well yep there's the shift to the right excellent that looks like about five six degrees that's plenty of shift in a fleet like this back to live images here now again, we're looking at we're, where we're looking at. You don't see the uh, the uh, the Spanish boat that's to, down to leeward of him. 
think our camera boat might be sitting on his air. <laughs> but uh, Denmark is away. Lubeck tacking now. That Spanish boat, Frey, or sorry, the French boat, uh, Matthew Frey and Clement tacking. And all of them going over. Tony tacking. GBR 118, Taylor and Batten tacking. So does the left still look uh, a bit bigger? Here comes a Alonzo. Bit. Comes the cross. And it looks like Alonzo might have to go behind the Danes. So not, not doing well putting the bow down. Wasn't the right move at all. And Matthew Frey out here again. Oh, they're going to attack before they get to that wake. Yeah, they are. Oh, Danes going right through it. That's going to be painful. So still another third quarter of the course left at the top mark. The Danes are going to be kicking themselves for going all the way out to where the uh, to where the uh, TV boats are. And I think that oh, that it's not ours. That's that good. wasn't the TV boat. No, well, I'm glad. Thank you. That's your that's your, you're on the TV boat, so you'll know if it's yours or not. <laughs> But, and, uh, and by the way, the, the, the qualification for the medal race is going to be super tight. At the moment, between places, the overall fourth with 38 points and uh, the tenth, it's only 10 points. Wow. Wow. And then I think the 11th through 13th are pretty tight right on there too, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not much in it. There's uh, on the 12th, the 12th has 56 points. So it's going to be a tight battle now in these three upcoming races to make it to the medal. Gilmore well ahead, though, overall with 26 points overall at the moment, uh, lying fourth in this race. Well, maybe this after point. the bottom mark, we'll look at the as if it finished now kind of thing and start to get a feel for who's on that bubble. But at the moment, I tell you what, Dylan Fletcher Scott looking pretty solid to me. And uh, James Peters and Finn Sterrett also looking pretty good on the right. We'll see how the left pays out. But it was Dave O'Connor, I think, there in the Australian boat tacking. Very tight. You see the difference in 49er racing to um, to uh, the Knacker 17 racing. You know, you don't see you don't see more than about 20, 30 seconds between this entire fleet. Look how tight oh, they it are. It is more mature, obviously. For it, sure. It's, the, the class has been around for 20 years. I can't believe it, but that's that's... <laughs> do, do you feel old saying that, yeah, Marcus? Yeah, it's very old. Yeah, the other thing is, yes, it's more mature, but at the same time, it's also, uh, it doesn't have these mo these moding, you know, the, you don't have these modes. Yes, you have a, a, a pinch mode and a, and a low mode, but that's kind of about it. You do know? you remember what happened, was it four or six years ago when they started uh, shoulder trapezing? No. Yeah, they tried a new mode where the crew, oh, the crew went on, the, on, the, shoulder on the, of the, of the skipper shoulders, and it was really fast. But it's now in the rules; you can't do it. <laughs> probably not the safest thing in the world. To no, do. no, probably really. not. <laughs> Maybe they should have allowed it and put helmets in. Let's mandatory look at, helmets. Let's, let's look, look at, at the this gate. top mark approach. This is getting pretty good up in here. Is, is that Fletcher Thomas there? Right, right on a very skinny ley line. I think it is. What do you have on yours? Or maybe it's Hawkins Thomas. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, they are around. So here they go. They can take the left mark or the right mark. Does that look confusing? It does, but it's actually pretty simple. There's a gate up here, and the boats go through the gate, and then they head downwind, and they can either take the left or the right one. Was there a bias in the gate? I think it was pretty square. Maybe a little bit favored to the right-hand side. That was a little bit closer, uh, further away from the wind, which meant closer to the leeward gate. So Plotzi and Tesse um, look like they're in maybe sort of top 10. But uh, Gilmore looking deep. I think we'll get our leaderboard back here sooner or later. And what's he doing there? Okay, here's an overview. So Bildstein Hussel doing nicely there in the 29 boat. And just behind them is uh, is Peters and Starrett. So this is just one side of the course. But uh, solid stuff with the Austrians winning this side. Interesting split in the fleet. By the, winds, by the way, the wind has swung back to the left about 10 degrees. That might help these guys out here. They can get themselves up and then consolidate. But the speed's so, so similar. That's the biggest contrast that we see between this and, and, uh, and the foiling boat is the speed's very similar. It's so hard to get a tiny advantage in this fleet. 
and these crews are so good at their at their uh, at their maneuvers. They don't have to experiment with them. The choreography is well settled. It's just about the shifts, and there's plenty of leverage here, with a procession on the right and a procession on the left. First across though, Bildstein and Hussel. Did I say that right? Bildstein and Hussel. Pretty good. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And then who do we have leading on the other side? The other side is led by Hawkins and Thomas, GBR 360. 360er Hawkins Thomas, not the top performing British boat by a long shot, but uh, all the British squad uh, teams are pretty solid. They have a very, very strong team training culture. A new, uh, a new team director this year in an old friend, Mark Robinson, a moth sailor himself. So he's the new British team manager. And uh, I think that's a good, that'll be a good day. Maybe there'll be a, a bit of a brighter, sunnier disposition than in the old uh, sparky days. <laughs> <laughs> sparky, I hope you're watching. Love you, brother. <laughs> and thank you to all of you for watching. Now we're looking at James Peters and Finn Sterrett. And uh, these are the third place sailors going into today's racing and very solid performance from these young lads look at look at the legs look at the interlocked legs in the foot straps they move as a unit now this is what a crew looks like it looks so steady oh man close cross behind not that close and what position are they in finn uh, uh peter stare at third they're currently third and overall they're second it looks like actually that's them gone around the mark, isn't it? Um, no, they're, they're in third in this race. Someone just went around the mark. Yeah, they, they pack up. Nice onboard shot. Grab the jib sheet. Go out the other side. So they took the left hand gate mark. Let me check the bias on that gate. Um, that's fairly square. And what I would suggest you do, folks, since we've lost our leaderboard, is uh, open up that sapsailing.com and pull the live leaderboard up yourself. You can watch them going around on one screen or on a little window and uh, watch the video on another one because we can't really tell you who's who right now. Well, I'm looking at the analytics, and uh, Hawkins and Thomas got a good lead. Um, fastest boat around. Actually, not quite as I say that. It's they're, they're down a little bit. Bildstein and Hustle, roughly the same speed. Bildstein and Hustle stand out. They've just got two maneuvers so far in this race. Two maneuvers. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. That's that optimal course you were talking about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Makes you wonder if that count is spot on. One jet. One tag, one jibe, maybe possible. Must have gone poor. I don't tack. think you can do any fewer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go for the poor tack option, do one tack, hit the windward mark, do one jibe, hit the leeward gate. Just reduce your maneuvers. And they're in the in the picture now. Bilstein and Hussel. Austria twenty nine. That's usually Currently, my strategy when I race currently leading this race and heading out to the right hand side only threatened by Hawkins and Thomas who went around the left leeward gate and put in a fairly early tack nobody seems to be super keen to head out to the left hand side anymore well as you say I mean all the forecast is for right shift right yeah that's what they're waiting for it's not super pronounced yet though on the last on the downwind there was a tendency towards the right but it's not much in it we're we're around 180 for quite some time now it seems to me marcus that most of the gains have come from pressure and not from shift yeah because it agree. is a little streaky out there it is an offshore breeze it is a funneled offshore breeze because the keel fjord is is almost upwind uh, with a with a little bend around the corner, but it it is a somewhat funneled breeze, and uh, that makes it fairly stable. But there there is oscillations and disturbances here and there, and it does look like on the image that that we currently see that there was a bit more breeze on the far end on the left hand side, and Hawkins and Thomas regained the lead.
I definitely would recommend you head over to this SAP ceiling. I love messing around with it, Marcus. You guys have built a really cool tool. But uh, there's so many different things to play with, you know. You can get, yeah, and you you can get me, lost in the data. You asked me yesterday if we had that cool graph where you can see how the places change. We do, we do. I have to, <laughs> I have to correct myself. It's in there. I can Excellent. show it to you later. So uh, this is what what happened so far on this upwind. Uh, boats are going in a fairly straight line. The wind plot down here. Uh, wind is oscillating slightly between 180 and 170 degrees. There's not that much in it. Fairly steady wind. Strength has also stayed fairly fairly steady. But um, Hawkins made a nice gain uh, in the middle of the course. So did uh, Buksak and Ritzbitsky. You got to help me on Ritzbitsky. that one. Ritzbitsky. Who, who, who climbed up here in the middle and regained the lead from uh, the guys who, who went to the right hand, just nailed the right hand corner. We're just watching Hawkins and Thomas actually just, and Buxak and Visbietzi just dig in and head back over to the right. So um, everyone's got their own thoughts on this tricky, tricky course right now as this, as this uh, uh, edge of this new boundary comes in, this new frontal boundary comes in. About 10, 10, or 10 or 11 knots upwind, I think these boats will do in the breeze like this. Yeah, 9 knots. Average speed is 10.4 at the moment. A total average speed, up yes, and down. Yes, up and down. So these, these boats will do typically 9, nine knots upwind and then sort of 15. Woo um, they're, currently, they're currently doing 10 knots. That's a little surprising. The, the wind is picking up a bit. Well, it should be. I think the forecast was um, 2 o'clock for the big one. Yeah, going up, uh, shifting to the right, shifting back to the left, and then in the afternoon it will be lighter. But I think racing will be done by that by that time. The sun is back out. Look at this. It's got gorgeous here. Definitely more breeze on the shore where we're standing. I don't know if it's all made it over to the race course yet, but wind has swung five to ten degrees to the left, favoring the boats who headed out to the left. I wonder and in the end, a fair number of boats did. Bilstein and Hussel went back to the left all the way. They're on the left hand ley line now. Uh, Currently, the Buxak and Visbietzi looking really solid. Look how far ahead they are right now. They just tacked for their final approach. So nice job from the poles. And uh, nothing wrong with that at all. I know that um, these and that are the puts younger, them overall in fourth place. These are the younger of the two Polish teams, the uh, the more experienced team. Here it comes across 380, or 360 Hawkins and Tom forcing the poles to tack. So... Nice work for uh, for Hawkins Thomas taking it to the Polish team. A they're little surprised. Gonna... Sorry. No, no, you're good. I, they're both going around the same mark here. I'm just a little surprised they didn't go for the right-hand mark because that's slightly favored. They seem to want to go to the left. That's where the last gains were made on the on the upwind. The top five boats all from either Poland or GBR. So uh, really cool, too, because, because we're watching Peter stare at here. Then Dylan Fletcher Scott, my pick for the day, came around in third. And the, and the older uh, Polish team came around in fourth or fifth. So great battle here between those two nations. And look at the ooching. Look at how they move the boat. You can see it from the camera. Boom, boom, boom. Move the boat. Ooch the, the stern around. Keep the power on. Get low, low, low. And uh, boat speeds at this point, you know, we're talking 16 knots, 17 knots, not too much slower than the foiling boats. Peters and Sterrett. I think we're, we're starting to get some of our graphics back. Aerial shot here. And uh, that are, those are those uh, leaders from the right side looking downwind. It should be Poland still in the lead there. Some darker streaks behind them, just very subtle. A little bit more breeze on the left-hand side, I assume. No big gains on the right so far, except Prispitek and Kolodzinski. They're doing quite, they're doing quite well. I think I say it and Kolodzinski. Well, how do you say it? Prispitek and Kolodzinski. Prispitek, you'll know. There you go. 
Pete Biasek and Kolodzinski. There, are, there are a bunch of people from Poland watching this right now, going, "That's not how you say it." Probably <laughs> not. But look at these guys. These, look, this this team has performed very well. They were seventh at last year's European Championship. They're excellent, excellent vets and uh, and sort of the elder statesmen on their team. Very fit, very hardworking. Here comes the jibe, Simo jibe. You know what? I think that they might have got a jump. I think Hawkins and Thomas might have got a jump there on the young poles. They're going to do what they can right now, see if they can get a lead into the finish. This is the final leg of this race, and it's tight. Let's stay with those leaders here. This is super tight. And they're, they're rolling, rolling them. them. They're rolling them. Look at that roll. It was all about the poles not being aware and uh, and uh, a no-look jibe, and bam, you got him. So great lead change. Brilliant, brilliant work from Hawkins Thomas, one of the youngest, I think, of the British teams. Really beautiful sailing, and look at that. Already two boat lengths in it, so they should be leading. But coming in from the far side, ho, the other Polish team, Przbiecek Kolodzinski, looking really good, looking like they're probably in the lead. Nice gain for them. So the young Poles they jumped from third to first. So the young Poles keep the Brits at bay on one side, and the old Poles go around both of them on the far side, and around they come. This will be their first win of the week, and. Oh, it's not over yet? No, no, no. They got to jibe once more, but... And... That looked like a late jibe. Awfully late jibe. Why did they Here jump? we go. But they'll make it. Through the line they go. Poland 42. Great work from those boys. And it'll be uh, Hawkins Thomas coming through in second right there. Now a battle for third. Will the other Poles be able to hold out that yellow kite? Yeah, it looks like they will. Third place for the young Poles. And then it looks... Uh, I'm not sure after that. We'll pull up what we can after that and check the analytics. It's uh, Fletcher and Scott. Dylan Fletcher, Fletcher, Scott and Bithel, and Peterson Sterrett in fifth, and Lübeck and Hoffman Buhl and, in sixth. And a, another Dane, I think. They're, no, that's Austrian as well. So that was um, that was uh, Bielstein Hosel in sixth or seventh? Seventh. And here and comes the Gilmore in eighth, brothers, which is their discard so far. Wow. Gilmore in eighth. And here comes some action. Look at that boat flying in. But that's the uh, that's another British boat there. And here come, I think the first of our German teams. That's Mendorfer, I believe. Yeah, Mendorfer Spranger. And a little Lima more. Costa. Uh, Portugal, Belgium. Is that Belgium? No, we have no Belgian fleets here. Now, interestingly, Marcus, eight, an eighth place. That means uh, that this entire regatta, Gilmore and. Um, uh, his crew have not had a double-digit finish. The only boat in the entire regatta, I think. But I don't think that the discard is carried forward. The discard in the qualification stays in the qualification, and you got your discard in the final. So their but I, think I think their discard in the qualification was also, I think, a seven or an eight. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They're yeah. really sailing no, well, and they'll just keep solid. moving up here. These boys. But it's good to see Stuart, um, uh, Stuart, and uh, and Biffle back on form after a dismal day yesterday. They had one of the toughest days of their careers, uh, with multiple collisions and uh, all sorts of issues, and uh, three double-digit finishes. One of them, which they got redressed for, but only to a ten. So um, uh, our leaders up until yesterday. Making their way back into it. Are we going to have uh, some scores to show? Or? No, we'll wait. We'll let you know when it's available. I'll, I'm trying to dig out that roll that we saw from the, from the drone footage. Let's, let's review that if we, if we can. Let me forward it a little bit. Yeah, that, I'd love to that see was, that because that was it's interesting, a, it was yeah. a, a picture-perfect match race move. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's, let's have a look. If we can go back to the replay... If we could get the replay up, we'll we'll look at that scene again. And I, I hit the play button. Uh, sorry, other direction. There you go. You're you're, you're there. Uh, and oh, there oh, was oh. the jibe. Let's back it up. Let's back it up a second. I want to show everyone. I want to show the jibe once more. Yeah, yeah. Back it up and go go regular speed for a second here. Right. So right here they're thinking about it. You can see the bow come up. Let's let it go. You'll see the bow come up because the crew started to move it right there. Okay, they go off that wave and they go right into the jibe, bam, and these like like just a, maybe a second, a second to respond, and that's all it takes. But One look second. Look at the gain from right there. Look at how fast they accelerate here. That that amazes me. That part. How could they? 
it's just that Shoot, side them. It's just timing, right? It's all about timing, and uh, and they got the timing right. And that inexperienced, younger Polish team just didn't didn't see it coming. We saw something like that uh, on the final race of the America's Cup with New Zealand with a no look jibe. Remember? But but it does look a little bit magic because I can't see that big gust that those guys caught that pushed him behind. They they just put in a much nicer jibe and had better acceleration afterwards. Yeah, yeah, beautiful work, beautiful work, and very quick to go over the top and hold that and they didn't get them the win unfortunately for them the uh, the elder poles were able to come in from the other side with a little bit of a shift and a little bit of pressure and that's how it goes so we will not have an interview for you because it's uh maybe not quite enough time in between races here yeah i mean this is fast racing that that will be <laughs> that will will be an issue tomorrow between you know, the medal races we i don't think we can get any any interviews in it's just too moving too fast the funny thing is is that if you know if it, when we can get the onboard audio sorted out it won't it won't matter so much you know whether you do the interview or not just being able to hear what these guys are saying and thinking and and stuff is is wonderful but uh you know again as we as we spoke about before broadcasts are a matter of budgets and the more people you have the more people you can bring into your broadcast we'd love to have an on-the-water reporter say, yeah, we can we'd see our rib is alongside watching. And this is, um, uh, this is, uh, I believe, Platzi and Tesse. And they didn't have a great one, did they? We don't have the results yet. We're working on that. Let's results go and actually up. have a look at those results. Great job from the team up here. So, as expected... Gilmore and Turner continue to lead, although they've had their lead cut into by a couple points. Now it is just six points, and it was ten. So uh, Peters and Sterrett, as you can see, sailing pretty well there. Um, and uh, Gilmore Turner with a nine in that one. Bildstein Hussel with a nice fifth, and they've been on the march since yesterday, and they're closed, closing it down now, less than eight points between them and the leader. Platzi Tesse with a tenth there, one of their worst. Um, and in fact, it's the same as their drop uh, uh, from from yesterday, and so they are just outside ten points. Yeah, um, uh, but things things are closing up. I think it does look like it's evolving towards a super exciting uh, final day tomorrow. Well, let's have a look here. I mean, what's what's important now? Let's start to look say from six down. Buxak Vizbiti, forty to forty nine. That's almost ten points. Now let's look at the next page because Langa and Langa are in the last spot of the elimination round at 49.5. But look at this, 51.5 tied. The other polls with uh, Matthew Frey and Clement on uh, 51.5. Taylor and Batten 54, 54.5 to Lubeck and then 60. So 10 points really between the 10 spot and the 15 spot. But certainly those 11 to 14, they all could get into it if any of those guys start to falter. And if these guys get a good race. So two races left. And um, if you're on this page after those two races, you are going to have some fun racing in the morning. And then you're going to watch some uh, some TV in the afternoon. Yeah, but we're in for two more great races. And, and a lot can happen in that, that area. It's far from clear who's going to crack the final. All right. Like as we, rate, as we wait for uh, race two to begin, I'm going to tell you how you can win a spinnaker dash watch it's 5 30 let's have a look start, so we have a bit of time let's have a look at what these spinnaker watches look like they're the newest addition to the 49er family there are valued official timekeeping partner
still eating that birthday cake, Marcus. Is there anyone you want to tell a happy birthday out there? That was yesterday. <laughs> well, she must love you. I said happy birthday yesterday. And she's not watching either. <laughs> she's taking care of the kids. <laughs> and they're not watching either? They don't know daddy's on TV? Come I think, on. I think they're surfing. They're out windsurfing. Yeah, that's probably smarter. <laughs> that's probably smarter. Good for them. It's a gorgeous day. The sun has come in. Um, it really is beautiful out here now, and that's not what I expected. The breeze is coming on, and... Uh, um, we are 320 away from a pre-start, and I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick reminder after looking at those beautiful Spinnaker watches, you can win one, or at least most of one, a $200 gift certificate coming your way if you can take a picture with your phone of yourself or anyone else watching our live feed on any of your devices, post it to any of our social channels at 49er Sailing or NACRA 17 Sailing along with the hashtag Spinnaker Watches 49er. You'll be entered to win. We got about nine really good entries overnight, and uh, one of those will be announced shortly over our social media channels, and that will get you a $200 gift certificate. So go ahead and get them in. Only another hour and a half left of action today or less as we head into the second race of the 49ers. Final day of uh, pre-medal race qualifications. I don't even know what you call it. we got to come up with some better names for these different segments, you know? I'd call it a qualification. Yeah, but the qualification was oh, the first was three yesterday. days. The se- this True. is finals racing, they're sort yeah, of calling we put ben it. To or, the go- or gold fleet racing. We've got to figure it's it out. It's gold fleet. You know what? If you have a suggestion on what we should call it, post it on Facebook. Let us know what you think. But I think they settled on gold fleet. I understand, but it's not that good. <laughs> It's got to be better. You know, like we're always looking for better. It's better. What what, what, what better way to come up with names than to crowdsource it from all these smart people watching on social media? Make sure to mash that that, uh, like button and share it with your friends. Send an email to your uh, your Yacht Club uh, uh, mailing list. Let them know that there's some great stuff on TV and that they can learn all sorts of cool things about sailing dinghies and skiffs and foiling boats by watching our broadcast. My name is Alan Block, longtime sailing reporter alongside two-time Olympic 49er sailor Marcus Bauer. We also have Canadian Olympian Ben Remacher hanging out, dealing with some technical issues himself. And that beautiful committee boat here in Kiel. Big thanks to all the volunteers from Kiel and Hamburg and all over the place for doing such a great job helping us out here um, with this big event, the biggest ever fleet of 49er FXs has ever assembled in a huge 95-boat 49er fleet. But only 20 of them are here on this course at this time fighting for the chance to be one of the 10 teams that will advance to those all important metal races stadium or sorry uh, theater style racing tomorrow tight courses short tracks 10 minute races one minute to go to the start 60 meter buys again to the left something we've seen so often uh, yesterday and today line bias to the left with the anticipated shift on the first upwind potentially towards the right so tricky where do you want to start do you want to go for the line advantage do you want to go for the uh, wind advantage on the first upwind it's going to be tricky Uh, the fleet pretty much settled on the left hand side most of them want to go there some boats going for the for the free space the clean air on the right hand side but the bias is pretty strong so everybody wants to go left yeah, you know, we've seen a lot of bias on these courses, and I know race officers like to put some port port bias in to make sure they don't get hit um, or that everyone gets tangled up around the committee boat anchor lines. There's our start, though, and it is Aus 91 down here all the way at the boat end. That's our regatta leader, Gilmore Turner. So Gilmore Turner deciding that right is right, and they own it right now. They've got the fleet locked out. First away, though, is a, a French boat, it looks like. That might be Mathieu Frey. And it did look like a clean start, by the way, from what I could see on the committee boat. As long as we had it in picture, it looked like it was all clean. And Marcus, I mean, with that much bias on the committee boat, what, what, I, pin end. Sorry, at the pin end, uh, uh, isn't it a big surprise to see the regatta leader uh, heading the other way? Or at least uh, uh, taking the right? Not if he anticipates the right-hand shift uh, coming in. Maybe he's got a good weather model himself and... Uh, and he's just expecting the wind to go right, so that that would make perfect sense. Well, Gilmore moving very well. Uh, uh, France 144, Fisher Jovin is who it was. They're also moving very well. They've got the bow down, and they're rumbling. You're looking at them right now. No, we're looking at a Polish boat there. 
drone having some trouble getting a signal from where it's at right now. But uh, we also saw, if I'm just looking at the analytics, we saw Gilmore turn and do a 360, it looks like. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh. They must have had an incident. Oh, that was Hawkins and Thomas did his 360. Let me check. Beauty of the SAP. Yeah, you're analytics. right. You're right. Hawkins Thomas did a 360, so not Gilmore. Gilmore's fine. Nine knots on the right. France, the fastest boat on the course at 10.1 knots. And we're looking right now at um, one of the two Polish boats, 174. That's the younger Polish team that, that uh, got third in the last race, heading out here on the right as well. Fleet has split 50-50. Half the fleet going left, other half going right. Just very few boats in the middle at the moment. And uh, looking from this angle, it doesn't look like any major velocity differences along the course like we've seen uh, up until now. And whose gamble is going to pay? Here's the 144 boat. That's Fisher Jovin hiking or uh, trapping as hard as possible. Peters and Sterrett leading boat on the far end that we can see on the screen. Very far end. That's where Peters and Sterrett are heading out. They had a clean start at the pin end, and they're currently leading that pack down there. And they actually just tacked, and I think they're going to have to go behind Diego Botin and uh, Iago Lopez. So this might be... Uh, the time that Diego Botin shines. He's had a rough go of it in this regatta, and surprisingly, a lot of us are um, a lot of us are saying that I uh, think that Diego has a, a, a long way uh, to dominate in this fleet. He's very, very strong. But uh, meanwhile, it's the 20th place Frenchmen that are banging the right corner. Speaking of banging, I keep banging on that the wind would shift to the right. It doesn't. It's swinging <laughs> a little bit to the left at the moment. The, the boats heading out to the right are bending up a little bit, getting lifted maybe by 5 to 10 degrees. So that ain't happening yet. Well, and I've just been talking about how it was nice and uh, consistent along the course, but look at the puff just to windward of these yeah, guys yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. very obvious that there's breeze coming in here. It does look dark in the background, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that's they're tacking to stay in it right there. Fletcher Scott and Bithel. Hey, I call. I might have called it right today. I've been call, I'm pulling for these guys all day, but uh, they look like they're, here comes those those banging Frenchmen. So maybe the right did come in. Mm, they certainly they're certainly doing well on their near side competition. That's Gilmore Turner there with them as well. I think. The lead is alternating between the far left and the far right boat on the uh, S uh, on the SAP Smart Analytics here, as as the wind shifts tiny little bits, but all that leverage means that the lead changes. So it's going to be. I think Fletcher Scott are all the way on the far side as well. I'm going to punch this on my screen see if I can see where those guys are. Uh, nice boat work in the foreground. Yeah, so you know what? Interestingly, so Fletcher, Scott, and Bethel, and um, and our third place team going into today, Peters and Starrett, are actually sort of battling the, each other out on the far left side. Um, and they're both playing that far left corner while the Frenchman and Dave Gilmore and Mengdorfer play this side. <clears throat> it's pretty... Um, Pretty interesting how it's working. Gilmore's just rocketed backwards. I think, I think they they all reached the far side of that puff and and absolutely going backwards now. Currently, the the left side is definitely winning. Botin and, uh, and Lopez are doing really well on the left hand side. And they've got, I mean, you can see it clear as day from this angle, from this height. Plenty of pressure on the left, whereas the pressure they had on the right has all evaporated. Two German boats here, Spranger and Maindorfer and Fischer Graf, both out on the right. You'd, you'd assume some local knowledge, but um, sometimes it's not about local knowledge. It's, You're not, so stuck. No, it's not so local when the, the wind swerves around in a, in a confused breeze. It's not that confused, but there is substantial shifts, and, and uh, the left side has gotten the upper, upper hand of it on this upwind. Definitely more pressure coming down the course here. Fletcher, Scott, and Bithel getting more lifted, even to a point where they're overstanding. So, Peter Sterrett in second, just ahead of Fletcher, Scott, Bithel, Diego Botiniago, Lopez, 
leading, but not by a lot. Good morning to Meredith Block and beautiful Josephine May Block. Hello, ladies, and to all of our supporters around the world. Thanks for watching us. This is our second to last race in this part of the series today. This is the 49er European Championship, and look at the action. Number 25 is Peters and Sterrett. Currently in third place in the regatta. They're attacking Diego Botin, though, going around that right mark as we're looking at it now. He will lead for the first time. Beautiful work from the Spaniard, Diego Botin and Lopez. Sterrett and Peters go around. And just behind them, it looks like uh, Fletcher Scott going around and Fisher Jovan going around the other side. So nice little battle finally. The Poles also back in it after winning the last race. The elder Poles. An interesting development on the overall point scores. Um, uh, Peterson, Sterrett, and Gilmore and Turner are tied for the lead right now. Oh, wow. Look at that. And, and Gilmore Turner not having the best beat. You know, they, they wanted that right side. It turns out it was not the place to be. Quick jive out for the Italians there. First away. So jive set around the, uh, the right gate looking upwind. But the plenty. Aussies, uh, the Aussies, Gilmore and Turner, they do follow Peterson Sterrett on the right-hand side of the course. Pick the right-hand gate mark at the top as well. Peterson Sterrett in the foreground. Fletcher Scott and Bithel in the middle there. Yellow kite is uh, is Fletcher Scott, and remember that was our regatta leader until um, until yesterday. Climbed up the leaderboard today, all the way back up to fifth place. I, I usually can feel it. No, they say, you know what, look, I spoke to, to, to Dylan last night, and um, he was in a, I, he was in less of a bad mood than I thought he would be after getting hit twice, once by their teammates, and then having all sorts of other issues and getting three double-digit finishes. He was in a good mood. He felt like they were only ten points out of second place, and he felt like that was not a problem. Major gain on Botin. They, they overtook... Because they're big gust they hit, hit there on the left hand side so it's not we can actually still see it a little bit uh, trailing them but boats the are actually fast enough that they overtake the gusts the puffs are really starting to come in now I think uh, I think we're starting to see the, the, the weather change overall wind now at Fletcher, 15 knots Fletcher's now taken on uh, up to second place here he's had some really good pace over top and he's going to have to jive onto port if we can go back to that other shot he'll eventually have to jive onto port we're going to see a good jive here from Button and Mara Not quite as clean as what we saw a few moments ago from Sterrett, but there's Fletcher. He's jived onto port, and he couldn't make the cross. So Peters has held him out in the background. He, uh, he just, Fletcher just had to luff, and uh, now he'll go behind his teammate Peters. Peters used the starboard advantage to hold the position, and some great racing on the far side there. Fletcher did all he could, but it wasn't enough to cross, and he gave it up to his teammate, and he'll follow him in uh, to the leeward gate. Doesn't Peters owe him one? Well, it doesn't work like that, Alan. <laughs> Every race is different. Uh, you just play by the rules as it comes. It's actually the safest way to do it anyways, rather than hope you owe it. Very sloppy years. Both these uh, teams played tactics, and uh, you can see uh, in some ways Fletcher's patience there was uh, pay is paid off because he's got a lane coming out of this leeward mark, and now he is the starboard advantage. Very busy back at the leeward mark. We can see so many boats coming in. Lots of sloppy douses here in the bottom of the screen. Uh, Lucas Prismatek and uh, Paweł Kolodzinski having a terrible rounding. I think Lucas Prismatek has fallen out the back of the boat. They're static at the bottom, and two boats have passed already, and the rest of the fleet is moving. I don't know if uh, they're stuck or because Prismatek should have been able to climb back in by now. Boutin in a nice lead on the right hand side heading out there whilst our drone is having some hiccups yeah the uh he's got quite a bit of clear water here heading the way he wants to going fast it's a nice comfortable position to be in we can see that in the depth in the bottom of our screen uh the two brits still locked neck and neck looks like fletcher's managed to climb above peters and in a controlling position um so those two pushing pretty hard out the far side, and here we are on the close side, driving up alongside. You can see the pace here, good pace, and this is uh, France, uh, Jan Jovin. Exactly. Fisher and Jovin. 
Wind at 15.2 knots at the moment, increasing slightly as expected. I do have an update on the weather forecast. Uh, it's predicted it's at 2 o'clock local time right now, and at 1300, strong rain and gusts are expected up to 30 knots. At what time? Uh, that's in one hour and five minutes from now. That's what we expect. Uh, there is a big dark cloud 20 nautical miles away that could be lightning and thunder, but it's only a 10% chance the lightning will hit us, but the wind is going to hit us in an hour from now, and this wind is likely to build till then. Good. You can see it's already really fresh looking up wind, so uh, as it builds throughout the day, the teams will be f tested uh, and increasingly so. Yeah, we can see in the background it does look how look far windy. back they're trapping up wind here, Marcus. It wasn't like that in our day. The new lighter masts uh, yeah. really gets the bow out of the water. The guys are planing the whole way up wind now uh, in a different way than when we sailed, and it looks really good. It looks clean. Uh, there's there's no hitting of the waves at all. We see from the leaderboard, um, the Brits are still locked only five meters apart from each other as they uh, are tuning partners and training partners. It's no surprise that the uh, boat speeds are very similar, and both of them sailing really well in these fresh conditions. You can watch the uh, leaderboard bouncing all over the place. Uh, the, te the teams are so close. There's lots of lead. There's lots of passes. So all the data in the SAP Sailing Analytics, you can see the wind, uh, it's been picking up, but it's been steady in the last 10 minutes. Uh, trends going up though, wind is also shifting towards the right here a little bit in the last, uh, for this last upwind and you can get this all for yourself at sapsailing.com where you find all the data from all the boats. Uh, Botin currently Botin and uh, Mara, um, sorry, that's Botin and Lopez, of course, uh, uh, leading the uh, leading the pack. Anything that springs to your eye, Ben? Well, he's in a very comfortable position. If we look at the graphic of the GPS overlay, we can see he's tacked directly in front of the two Brits who are closest to him. So that's a strong controlling position. He'll be able to come across uh, just a little bit low, but leading those two boats, choose whichever mark he wants to go around for the downwind and, uh, and take very little uh, leverage risk. Uh, we have a... We have, a, uh, we have a wind device up here at the, at the windward gate giving us uh, the leverage. It's fairly square gate at the moment, no advantage on either side. Let's also get a label on the French boat. Here we go, and let's zoom out a little bit. French boat heading in from the right-hand side, so who's going to win that split? So that's the scenario as the teams approach the windward mark, and we can see just how close they are. Boating uh, in the background. French made a nice gain here. We can see they're ahead of the Brits, uh, but not by much. So who's going to win that split? It does look it looks, like... It looks like uh, Botin will be able to hold. He'll be able to come in here. But he's once he got, does his tack, he's, he's just got his one boat ahead. length lead, according to the sailing analytics. Will that be enough to pass him in front? He does have fresher breeze coming in from the left-hand side. It's went up. Oh, it's actually, sorry, he, he, it's 10-second lead. He, yeah. He'll easily pass. No, and, there he goes. He's gone for his tack, and he's... And he uh, wants to take the left-hand mark, Yeah, obviously. and he's directly ahead of the Brits. It looks like uh, the French here might be setting up for a tack in Barraway, which is a difficult-ish prospect in this much wind. Uh, the other two have set up on the port lay line, but then they would get clear, lay in, clear water the whole way down and starboard advantage into the finish line. We'll see what they do. They could reach off and just close the distance and, redu and reduce some maneuver. For me, I'd be tempted to go around and follow, I think, in this position, but maybe they're more ambitious than that. They are saying hi, so I think they're setting up for attack bear away. And there they go. And that will bring the windward gate into view. That's where all the boats have to pass through. Windward gate, leeward gate, boats always have to go through the inside and go around. You can around. see on the far side there, uh, the Brits have already got their kite set, and here the French are still uh, 
hoisting, so... But that did look like an overall expensive move for them, putting in an extra attack there. It's the long-term move, though. They're going to have clear air the whole way down. As long as there's no starboard boats that interfere with them, um, might be worth it, especially if they feel good about that side from pressure point of view. They did just come from there. Teams do have a tendency to really feel good about the sides they've come from, so... Yeah. Back on board with Peters and Starrett as they waste no time right getting right to the back of the boat and trapping as hard as they can. And looking at the overall scores after that final windward gate rounding, um, Gilmore uh, again in the lead with a four-point lead over Peters and Starrett. Uh, and Fletcher and Bithel not too far behind in the overall scores. It's just six points in. It's going to... It's going to remain tight for the final medal races. It's going to be an exciting medal race day with nothing decided. Really looking forward to it. Uh, what about uh, top 10 go in, in the medal? The top Correct. 10 make it through to the final day tomorrow. Um, but don't forget, these races coming up here, these races we're sailing right now, they're actually the most valuable ones. The biggest point differentials can happen here, and we can see the teams that are sailing well here, they're setting themselves up to have a chance. Uh, but you're right, the way the scoreboard lines up, it's going to be all on. Tomorrow. So who is in and who is out at the moment uh, with uh, quite soon just one race to go? Uh, there is... It is too close to call right now. We'll have to look at the overall leaderboard after that race because uh, in seventh place, 56 points on Megendorfer. We're, we're on to the second page here. We can see uh, Prisbatek and Kolodinsky. They were way down in about 17th overnight. They've moved up now to be right on the cusp. And uh, it's on the ninth boat, 10th boat, 61 points. So it is going to be really close. And the next race is going to be super exciting to follow. I'm going to make it a little more exciting. I just listened in on a radio transmission from our, our race officer, John Craig. They're going to roll right into this next start immediately because we can't see it from here where it looks all pretty and sunny. But on the other side of this building, it is not pretty and sunny and the weather's coming in, boys. Yeah, if we could get a drone shot after the finish, swinging around, looking at that thunderstorm closing in, uh, that'd, be, that'd be interesting. Um, it is getting ugly. Yeah, here we go. Racing into the finish. We've got a whole fleet of, uh, of boats here. Looks like nice protected position for the Spanish over second place. Um, able to hold off Fletcher. We see how much Fletcher was uh, able to gain on that last upwind. It's really nice to see good performance from him. Uh, great first race, great second race, and great to see Diego Botinha and Iago Lopez also coming on. One more jibe? No, no, not Just at all. to coast through the finish. So safely through for them. Uh, yeah, Fletcher and uh, Bithel, not that they would have been short of confidence ever, but uh, that's a nice reward they, for them. For they narrowed down the gap, though, yeah, on that downwind. Oh, sure. Sailing very well. Uh, Peterson Starrett gained one place. Really uh, consistent, these guys. Peterson Starrett, young sailors, but very consistent. And Here comes uh, Dave Gilmore. He's got a battle here. He's going to have to try and hold his wind. Wow, that's close from the Germans. Oof. And there's a boat coming in from the far side as well. They're going to surge through for the line. And they made it ahead. That I was think. a really was, close uh, the jibe young, there. That was the young Poles from Booksack. Yeah, that was, the German, that was a, quite a close jibe, unnecessarily so. Austria, Bildstein through. And then uh, I think that's maybe the Italian. Uh, we didn't see it. Was it was it Frey? Was that a French boat that came in fourth? Uh, fourth was Javin, yeah. Was, uh, we could look at that jibe once more and uh, have a look. Oh, look how tight it is wow. at the pin boat. Four boats, five boats through in a matter of uh, five seconds. And the fast-finishing Lang brothers, wow, that's disappointing <laughs> for them. Guys, They're 12th uh, overall. They really needed a better finish than that. that. That's it. The whole fleet finished within 52 seconds. That's the type of racing we're looking for, you know. We've been adjusting this format, 20 boats, 20 minutes, 52 seconds spread. That's amazing. Yeah, 60 seconds is, is the whole fleet. There's one boat missing. Okay. Uh, Nevertheless. Yeah. Quite a, quite a performance, quite a show of parity here from all these teams, especially in these medium-strong conditions, flat-ish water. You know, these guys can all work the boat really hard in these conditions. But, you know, we're seeing probably the favorites or the ones we suspected move up to the top. Good action from the water here. We've had a little bit of everything, not only all week, but just today. I mean, today we've seen down to seven knots all the way up to about 18. And uh, we're just showing the storm cell coming in. So 
the race committee's going to fire one off here. That and, doesn't uh, look too bad. Yeah, it looks, looks lovely. You know, a bit of rain to chase it, and uh, these guys will love it. And, folks, if you do uh, see this aerial view just start to go black or uh, hazy, that means the drone is somewhere off in Sweden. So <laughs> any of our Swedish fans watching, if you see a little drone uh, tomorrow, pick it up and send it back to us over here. Yeah, it looks, well, you know. Doesn't look as bad few, as. Another few knots will really test these guys. It doesn't look as bad as the radar says it looks, but uh, here is our points after the second race of the day and the last, uh, second to last race of this round before we move to the medal races. Gilmore and Turner just barely hanging on. You know what? They clawed back again. So nice job clawing back and maintaining a little, little lead over Peters and Starrett. Just three points, another four back to Fletcher Scott and Bithell. He'll be really happy about that, finally moving up and getting back to where they feel they belong. Bildstein Hussel just behind. And then let's go look down a little bit. Botine right on the bubble right now. That is crucial. 61 points. It took a win to get him up to the top oh. half of the leaderboard, but there's going to be a huge charge behind him. As we go to the second page of the leaderboard, we can see all the teams chasing him, and there's a lot of them, and they can all make it. All the way down to 16th place, all those teams can make it in because there's only 8.5 points down from uh, 10th to 16th. So that take a look out next race for O'Connor and Morton, although we are missing a result from them, so I wonder if uh, it's adding that everything. That might be an issue, yeah. And then we've got Prisbetek Kolodinski. Uh, that's four and a half points back. Lubeck and Hoffman, four and a half points back. Lang and Lang, five and a half points back. Taylor Batten, seven points back. And then uh, Matthew Frey, uh, eight and a half points back. All those margins are doable. Whether or not uh, Matthew Frey can uh, get the eight and a half points and not have any of the others beat him in the same time uh, is an open question. But there's a ton to play for here. And if we go back to the first screen at all, if that's still possible, we can see who else is in danger. Okay, looks like uh, we're not going to pull that up so quickly. Our, our uh, got... graphics team is busy uh, moving on to the next instead of going backwards. I think they're ready for a replay soon. And uh, we'll relive that tight finish here when we get a chance. I'll tell you what, Lang and Lang, I, they were absolutely flying there in that overstood, uh, overstood hall toward the finish. They were doing about three more knots than anyone else, but not enough to keep them in the top ten. Nice overview. Beautiful. Of the Bay of uh, Kiel and a little bit of analytics and I, I thought that was quite interesting uh, comparing to the NACRA the differences are not very big here look at the speed differences I mean that's what a matured class looks like they, 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 they <laughs> point two of yeah. the not point it's three like nothing the in it <laughs> also not much in the maneuvers uh, distances uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the bar is uh, skewed a little bit but you can see it's like uh, 150 meters it's yeah, 150 yeah, meters yeah. in it's 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 very very close sailing and and we'll, I'm, I'm so excited about the racing tomorrow in strong breeze with those 10 minute races. It's going to be super uh, exciting to, to, to follow. Well, you can see how close it is uh, on the graphic. Let's see how close it was on the replay if we can get a well, chance. Well, yeah, I have a replay lined up um, for, for that jibe we looked at. Um, there were actually two jibes. I think we just focused on the second one. Let's let's uh, play that. You can see the Aussies jibing here, and then the Germans are f kind of forced into a jibe. You thought it was a little bit late. I don't think it was late. Yeah. Uh, it I was think clean. It was, ju I, it was just about they had to react uh, because the others jibed, and I think it was just about right. Yeah. So it was, it was actually good sailing. It was not, not as close as I thought on first blush, but uh, solid stuff, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, we're just affecting a change to the right of 10 degrees. Windward marks 10 degrees to the right. Still, we remain at point seven. Director of America's Cup Race Management uh, for quite some time, and uh, a brilliant race officer, John Craig, letting us know exactly what we need to. He's Only th the he's best. thrilled for the promotion here to 49er Gold Fleet Racing, and uh, we're thrilled to have him. He's uh, gonna get that last race. He's gonna he's gonna get that last race in here before the storm comes in, and. Uh, That'll make for a perfect finale ahead of our final day tomorrow. One more of these great Gold Fleet races in uh, 20, 20 knots almost. and Good test to see who, should, does, who deserves to be in the final, really. We've got you know a dozen boats who are on the bubble, just the way it should be. It makes such a difference to have a race officer's experience as John uh, and, and David and Natalie and the other race officers, uh, Lukey yeah. as well, my roommate. Um, 
but uh, it makes it a lot easier for the sailors. The, these guys communicate so clearly and so effectively, and there's never any wasted words, and there's never any confusion about what they mean, and you know, everyone should take a lesson from that. I like to try and get their voice on the radio as much as I can so that the guys who run the little perf races back home can listen to how a pro does it because that's how we should all talk. We should all talk as clear as we possibly can and just not mess around, you know? Enough with the, enough with the code flags, enough with the, you know what I mean? Delta Charlie Lima. Delta Charlie Lima. All right. So, sapsailing.com for all of the very cool analytics. If you like to geek out on data, as most of us sailors do, it's a good place to go. Facebook.com, 49er Sailing. Ask us anything, and Ben or uh, Marcus will answer you, or maybe I will if you're really unlucky. Well, well, you know what's funny? What I'm dreaming about right now is when I can download the stream and cut some of the maneuvers I've seen live here today. Some of those hoists that I've seen from Peters and Sarah, some of those jibes I've seen from Peters and Sarah are going to go on a highlight reel for sure. Yeah. They're really showing us you know, how far you can push a boat. Did, I don't know if you guys noticed uh, Peters using his back leg and the foot strap, going for the bearway. He then levered himself inward on the boat to account for the g-forces get as far get his weight as far in as their planing low to coast by the by that point starrett has got the spinnaker all the way up he uses the lever of his uh foot strap to get back out and on the power at the exact same time it's a beautiful thing we'll get some highlights out of that and you can go back in the stream and replay it as well from the top mark very cool very cool it takes uh, it takes a 49er sailor to recognize that stuff to me, it all just looks like they're amazing, and I'll never be like that. <laughs> <laughs> we have four minutes uh, uh, to the start, uh, so I hope we can go back out on the water and have a look at, at what's happening and uh, whether that bad cloud is coming in. What yeah. kind of wind From our vantage point, I mean, it looks warm and great because we're looking at the sunny uh, sky to, to downwind of us, but it's right over top of this building that those clouds are coming in. Uh, it's going to take them a few minutes to move the course 10 degrees. They've got to set that windward gate square, but I expect yeah, they're I already they got in sequence. It. Yeah. yeah, these like like we've said, these are pros, and uh, yeah. they got it, and we got 320 to go. Definitely some big puffs on the course that I can see. Nothing huge yet, but definitely some nice dark patches, and these sail are going to be trying to get into those patches and use them to propel them up the course as fast as humanly possible. And uh, keep an eye on that number three. They're really performing today, Dylan Fletcher Scott and um, and uh, his crew, Stuart Bithell, and on board here with the Italians, who still remain in, I think, what, fourth? Not exactly sure. Pazzi Tessi. And they are from Ravenna, if I, if I, on the Adriatic, if I, uh, if I did my research right last night. Not the heavy air locale that uh, maybe folks up in Garda might be. Oh, those guys have plenty of experience on circuit now. They'll have uh, trained in all locales. Um, yeah, 2.30 to the start. We see everyone getting their transits, uh, getting ready to have the, a clean, clean start and know how far they can push things. Peters and Sterrett sailing impressively today. Not looking too intense yet. I'm guessing they're keeping their options open right here. Most square line we've seen today, but still 30 meters advantage on the left-hand side. So the pin's going to be a little bit crowded again, I suspect. Having said that, most boats bunching up at the committee boat at the moment. Well, we've just moved the weather marks 10, uh, 10 degrees to the right, and we think the right's coming in. That was in the forecast. So a lot of teams will be looking to chase that going right. Um, that said, the 30 meters and, a, and maybe a clean start to the pin, uh, not the worst choice you can make, but uh, if everyone's going for the, for the boat end, I'd say they're trying to leverage and tack out early. In the last two minutes, there was a 10 degree shift to the right, swung back now. And with one minute and 30 seconds to go, we've got the, the advantage on the left-hand side has gone down. It's just 15 meters now. Very square line. Uh, in this kind of speed, it's 15 meters. Won't be worth chasing. Just about getting off the line and being able to go the direction you want to go and have the options uh, for modes that you want. So yep. the, the teams won't be looking for those meters. They'll be looking for cleanliness. The other thing that might be happening is uh, these, these guys may be just looking at a cloud coming in and try, trying to get to that cloud. You know, uh, at the edge of these big clouds, sometimes the best wind is right under the darkest one. So um, they might be seeing some angles on this, uh, this sky that we don't. And it'll be interesting to see who picks up the first big puff. 40 seconds to go. Series leaders lining up at the top part of the uh, bunch, but they're 
fair bit down. They need to look for a gap. We can't even see them right here now be because they're behind all those boats. That's Gilmore and Turner. Only 27 seconds to go. If they're the next boat in line, they should have space. But any more, uh, they might find themselves having to wait and then tack out right. This is when uh, port deck option can be really challenging. If there's no bias in the line and there's a bunch of boats stacked up at the boat end, you might end up having to wait quite a bit uh, for trying that. So team, lots of options on starboard. Here we go. Five seconds to go. All the way down here, Plotzi and Tessie, but it is 46. Is that Botin? That's the uh, Yeah, that's the Alonzo brothers. Alonso so brothers. winning the pin. They love the right side. They've started on the right all three times, but first away already taking Stearns is the other time boat of Vicanti and Tonyi. Great start from Bildstein and Husel. Austria yeah, 29. Beautiful. Punched forward. Um, and Botin and uh, Mara, uh, Spain 92 or 91. Uh, ducking the fleet, and they just got tacked on on top by Italy tw 23. That's a tough start for Botten and Mara. We know they're one of the teams on the bubble. They will have not been happy with that performance. No, and a lot of good teams are taking Stearns and in second row starts here, so I think they're just wanting to get out to the right. It's uh, They must see something that they want out there, O'Connor. Um, they're, they're not fully powered up here. Uh, the team's... It, mu it must not be as windy as uh, we might have expected yet. We can see... Uh, uh, Finn Starrett there, easing the Vang and easing the Cunningham. He's trying to get some extra power in the mainsail, and he's moved his body weight forward. We looked in the last race how far back the guys were trapezing, and here they're not doing that. It's they're looking for extra at power. The moment. Only 13 knots, so that's going to be a big challenge. Some teams may have set up for 20 knots that's about to come in. So, some teams are uh, m might have just been taking what's at the start line, and that makes a big difference in boat speed here. Certainly big enough to lose your spot. We saw Peters and, and Starrett how fast they were in the last race. Here they can't even hold their lane. Meanwhile, Regatta leader is probably last right now. Probably last. So they've already tacked back. A Gilmore and Turner have already tacked back, and they are in, if not last place, then very close to last place. But there is one drop race from this series, so uh, that might uh, keep things steadier than they might otherwise, but uh, they'll be wanting to go in full of confidence and uh, and claiming those extra points, not well, dropping off. Well, and the other, and the other Aussie, our, our former 18-foot skiff world champion, Dave O'Connor, has sent it out to the right corner. So he's okay, taking no, a gamble here. <laughs> no fear from him. He's uh, he, he needs a big result to get into the Gold Fleet. He was uh, earned to the f top series. He's in 12th heading into this race. So he's laid his claim on the right. He obviously likes it. The tracking looks good. He looks like he's on a really high... Uh, uh, now that he's back on starboard, he looks like he's gotten an advantage and should be a position that can work out for him. He's over nine knots, so he's in some decent breeze, too. Good stuff here, folks. And, not, and this is the time when you gamble, isn't it, uh, Ben? If you're Dave O'Connor and you're... Dave O'Connor just comes into view here, and he's making the crosses on some of the other guys who tacked out later. You know, he's not super powered up. You can see he's cr crouching in, but we can... Well, Marcus is going to well, show us what's well, happening. What we can see is that after the start, you know, down on the timeline, if we if we look at the go for the start mark, um, that's right here. That's that S on the timeline. The wind has swung to the right a little bit, then go back to the left, and that made the left look really good for a brief moment here. Um, still in the lead, Bilstein Hussel won that start. That's this boat right here, uh, heading out and leading the pack to the left. And the majority of the fleet seems to love the left. Uh, uh, it's not like they, they want to get towards that cloud that seems to be closing in from the right. And just as you say that, Marcus, I think we can see uh, uh, the Australian there, uh, O'Connor, taking a bit of a header. So right now the left does look good in terms of the angles. It's hard, a little harder to tell on the pressure. Remember, too, I mean, at this point in the regatta, you know, there is there's some conscientiousness of who's who and who's where. So sometimes guys might be going in a direction not because they think it's the fastest, but because they want to stay ahead of the guys they must stay ahead of. It's worth looking at the overall score and see who's, who's on the cusp of making it uh, into the finals. And it is awfully close between Hawkins and Thomas on 70 point, 71 points at the moment and then Botin and O'Connor here we have it Botin we're looking at the bottom of the screen here we're looking at Botin and Mara on 72 points and if we can go to the second screen we'll see how much their advantage is on the teams chasing them and how it's much? only two and a half points on the Lang brothers and Taylor and Batten so for sure those cha places will change a lot in this race Oh, we got a tight cross here with O'Connor, but he's going to make it. Uh, O'Connor's got some of the most leverage in the fleet. Uh, it doesn't look good on the predicted standings right now, but if he can catch a shift, uh, he's got a lot to gain. Looks like uh, looks like 
the right hasn't worked out so well for them so far. But No, I think they lost a lot of pressure over there. You can see just the boat not really lit up. And the left still moving pretty well. But most of the fleet has come back over onto port now. And uh, not much lift in it. Little bit of lift on some of the leaders. So obviously run at a runway here. That's all the leverage he can take. O'Connor attacks back. You that. can see he's the farthest right, rever right leveraged of the leading pack. And you can see he's in the lightest there. I mean, there's none of that darker patches, but uh, uh, plenty of darker patches at the top of the screen. But he's got a pretty good angle. Uh, yeah, like an angle like little. that and a little bit of breeze, you know, he can he can really light it up. But if he doesn't get that breeze, it might not be... He, he, you know, he chose what to do. So he can only uh, he can only go as hard as he can the way he wants to, and doesn't look terrible. No. He's, he looks mid pack, has a little bit of luck here, a little bit of puff, but but a little bit fresher out on the left. Definitely. There's some darker streak streaks and there, it, pushing and that, in, and that's increasing. It looks like that's definitely increasing from over there. Yeah, the guys are. We can see on the uh, SAP analytics that the guys have overstood going left, but they're reaching in fast. Well, Husel's going back for another bite. Husel just tacked back, going for a cross. He's gone back for another bite. Wow. Interesting. It's for, really stacked up on the very far left uh, port ley line. Uh, look at all that breeze. I mean, I'd want to be in that for sure. As they say in skiffs, pressure beats shift all the time. But uh, Husel has crossed behind and is tacking to leeward. And now we're looking right there. You can see the uh, the Austrian flag as, as Italy 23 tacks. So... Mangdorfer has pulled into the lead. Standout from yesterday. I think he won the day, actually, Mangdorfer yesterday with Spranger. My favorite word to say this week. Spranger. <laughs> we saw the Italians tack out at the start, and they've managed to uh, navigate the right-ish side of the beat here to a good position. There will be uh, starboard at the right. Uh, oh, that's the port mark they're going yeah. into. So clear cross for them. Beautiful work. Yeah. Unexpected. Uh, bottom of the screen, Portugal 27, George Lima and Jose Costa. Wow, Bill Stein had a has the tag. Week, but looks like there's only the single mark set here. Uh, we don't see a gate. But it is there. I can see it in the analytics. And uh, the other side is not even terrible, but it's just more breeze. See, some boats oh. are shooting off to the, to the other mark. But there's just more breeze ahead. You can see it. They're trying to chase their way into that breeze. They're, you know, it seems like the puff has just escaped. And Bildstein Husel goes for his. It does a penalty turn. Yep, it was. It was a little bit of a, a little bit of an aggressive tack. <laughs> wow, Bildstein and Husel. You know they were in Oof. peak position just a wee bit earlier in this, and all of a sudden they're down to ten. But look, the left doesn't look terrible either. There's just a glassy patch in the middle, and the left actually looks quite looks fresh. Like that looks good very, path. very promising. Can we pick out which teams uh, in the blue kite heading left down Yes, the we can. That is just a second. Looks to me like uh, Botin Alonso. Is that possible? We'll be closing in fairly quickly. I think that is That's uh, the, Alonso the Alonso brothers. brothers. We saw them start at the boat end, and uh, they typically do. Followed by Taylor Batten. Taylor Batten. Taylor Batten was one of the teams we picked out that needed to uh, make some passes to get into Gold Fleet. So, Marcus, uh, looking at your cumulative analytics, is this, uh, has this move made enough difference for Taylor Batten? Uh, no, not yet. They are uh, in 14th place at the moment on 79 points, and to make the cut they would need 69. So they're 10 points away. I think they're pretty much out of contention at this point. And it seems fairly safe between Crivelli, Visconti, to and Tongni, uh, and Lange and Lange, which is, they've got four points in between those two, Lange on 11th, and uh, so the Italians on 10th. Let's try and isolate where Lange is at some point, and we can see if uh, if he's able to move up from 8th, to, he'd have to move up to 8th to a, a top 3 or something in this race to make a difference. Um, Lange is in about ninth is where I'm looking at on the analytics. He's sort of in the back of this train all, uh, on starboard still. Now, he just jived. Okay. Tough position for him to be in. He probably doesn't realize how precarious it is, but he certainly will know he has to gain every point he can this regatta. Oof, this boy. Race. It comes down to the very, very end, doesn't it? Leg two. Two more legs to go before this portion is in the bag and ten of these guys are eliminated from 
competing in that metal race tomorrow, those I'm, metal races? I'm not sure that this side, they ever caught that breeze, really. The far side... Uh, far side looks better, doesn't looks it? Looks better, yeah. Look how yeah. dark it's getting now. There's the next wave. So yeah. we might start to be starting to see that 15, 16, 17 knot puff so out there. Taylor the Batten up into sixth point, up into sixth place here. By the way, in the background, you can see the opening of the fjord. That's where the wind blows out from. Beautiful part of the world here. This historic and famous German North Sea port. East Baltic Sea. Baltic Sea port, sorry. North Sea is just around the corner. But a great job from Meindorfer Spranger. Uh, We've seen really good performances from the from both the men's and the female skiff sailors uh, from Germany here. Really solid performances, as you sort of hope and expect. Would be good to get the women's uh, FX results up way at the end of our broadcast as well. They've been sailing all day. So Mingdorfer sprung around first, and they're going to go right. The the young poles, I think, around second. Uh, Italians. No, that's no. Sorry, the Italians. And the Alonzo brothers around in third. Classy and Tessie. Yeah, you can see how streaky it is. Not windy at all right now with between the wind shadows and the light air. Man. And, uh, you know, this is really tight racing. We were writing out the Langa brothers having to pass too many, but if the boats are this close and the wind and the uh, course is this streaky, there's a lot of boats still to be passed and, and to have passed. Well, and we've seen plenty of passing already. You just have to get into one of those dark little patches and you can easily pick up three or four boats. You can see how critical it is to get the lured mark running right. If you get pinwheeled out uh, like this, uh, like the uh, that was British, uh, I think Batten. Uh, you know, you're way low. Uh, guys are have hugely different leverage. I'll tell you what else. Uh, uh, Gilmore and Turner are currently sitting in about 16th place. So um, this would be their first time they picked up a oh, double-digit wow. finish in this entire regatta. The only team. To, uh, to be sailing all single-digit finishes. So I think that Gilmore and Turner's luck seems to have folded on this last race. Won't, it won't affect the, uh, the gold fleet, or the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the final gold fleet standings, but it will knock them down a little bit. Here we take a look at the top ten. This is the ten the teams that will make it into the final. If, uh, if it holds up like this, and if you look at the bottom of the screen, you see Brisbane Tech and uh, Visconti both on 70.5. If we get ready for the second screen, you see the guys chasing them. Back is Taylor Batten and also Button and Mara. Uh, so two teams need to make some big leaps here, changing, especially Button and Mara. Button and Mara are down in 16th place. If they can carve out six of those to get to 10th, might be enough of a difference. It's a, same issue with Langa and Langa. I mean, they don't have a lot to gain here, but they uh, they, they can do it. It's going to be tough, especially if uh, if the breeze doesn't pick up a little bit and sort of give them something special. But um, it's a long way to go in this light air. Boy, really light all of a sudden. <laughs> We're, we've been calling for a storm, and this is what they get. But I guess that's why they call it the calm before the storm. Well, I, I don't think anyone's going to mind too much if we're not if if we're not getting doused in a monsoon here uh, uh, in the next ten minutes. I don't mind it ending a little before that. But. Yeah, analytics still give us fourteen knots, twelve to fourteen. So it didn't go down too much. Looking at the data, it's 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 been only up thirteen, fourteen. Max was maybe 15 knots in this race. Not even. I, I hardly get any 15s here. And, no. we're, and we're expecting those blasts of up to 30 knots to be in within half an hour. So the race will be finished by then, and the teams will be all hopefully getting in as quickly as possible to escape. Good timing. Yep. Well, maybe not good timing for you guys who wanted to watch some pitch polling, but that'll be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've had a great regatta here. We haven't missed, you know, we haven't missed one race. Um, it's been beautiful conditions. Uh, you know, think about coming to Kiel for your next class racing event. Yeah, they'd be thrilled to have you, or just uh, ask for your championship to join to be part of Kiel Week. Uh, part of Kiel Week, a real classic. You know, if you've got a class where you guys like to be a little social, there's no better uh, week to do than Kiel Week. You can come in and enjoy uh, some time with thousands of fans, literally tens of thousands of fans who will. Uh, I think it's be more. I think it's hundreds of thousands that come in. I they, think they, they said they three say million, three million. Yeah. But around the yacht club, tens of thousands, well, just I, around the yacht club. I area. guarantee you, many, many of those people are beautiful people. <laughs> Half of them. <laughs> here we go a tight cross here for the lead i think uh, george lima and, Co and uh, costa from portugal yeah finally. they're gonna have to choose whether or not to the oh and they tack underneath 
both teams, and I think the Italians had it, and we're going to get a split. The uh, young Poles will go behind and uh, take a little bit of uh, oh, the clear cross, but go out to the ley line, and then we got Mergendorfer just at the bottom of the screen here, another tight cross. Even, uh, even two-thirds of the way through the race here, just boat lengths in it. That's a big duck right there. It's a smart move, though, to take that duck. Uh, compared to attack, uh, those guys will save up their maneuvers. They can get out to a ley line and uh, sail in their clear air. If you try and do anything else in that spot, all of a sudden you're sandwiched and you're still the port boat, or you're still the lured boat, so you still have a starboard boat above you. There's not very much to be gained there. Landorfer had a little private little lift there for about 20 seconds that was beautiful. No one else had it. Really well, nice We're just work. taking a look at the Brit there, Dylan Fletcher, who was in the middle of the screen uh, before our camera people had to speed up. But he's used the right as a lot of leverage and uh, back in the game. We haven't seen him at the top of the standings. And uh, he's all challenging for the lead. So if he was to um, move, he's now up into fourth place and <laughs> or fifth place, yeah, it's yeah. jumping around all over the place. But, oh, you know, Fletcher could be back at the top of our leaderboard by the end of this race, uh, which would be a really big turn of events after yesterday falling right off the leaderboard to be back at the top. It's crazy stuff. Meanwhile, Mangdorfer Spranger and uh, Tessie Plotzi just both took a dig out to the right again. And um, We also see Prisbedek and Kolodinsky. Edge of a puff. Uh, uh, yes, getting into the second position. They need that race to make it into the gold fleet. So when what. it comes to data, by the way, guys, when it comes to data, Fletcher and uh, Bith are pretty convincing. They're, they're uh, currently the fastest boat on average speed in the fleet. So I, I, And I think we've seen the wind go right here. So I think the start of the system might have been hitting the f boats on the right side of the course, and that's where we've seen Fletcher and Bithel, along with Prismatek and Kolodinsky, come from. Uh, that's how they've got back into this race. So the, we talked about the opportunities that are available, and they, they seem to have been there. And you spoke of the end of the day. They're in the lead now. They took the lead. They took the overall lead again. Wow. Good, great sailing from Fletcher and Bithel. They were the favorites before this regatta started and uh, just faltered the one day. We see Prismatek and Kolodinsky consolidating into what will be a tight third. This will be a very tight rounding here. I, I wonder if we'll see uh, Fletcher try and aim for the right mark. He just came from the right side, probably based on pressure. Big bear away on them. Big bear away they just did. Okay, so we've got it shifting. We can, play, we can watch it play out here at the top of the course. They've got a tight cross, and they didn't make it. They had to tack. Oh. And Prisitek and Kolodinsky are going to have to be the pinwheel around, but they should have the speed. We see Bithil pinching up just a little bit. Very tight action. The poles trying to go over the top there. And look at how tight on the other mark it is. That's Plotsy and Tesse going around. Last minute shift, they ended up uh, being listed first round. So they're going to go uh, left downwind here, and uh, there come uh, the Brits and the Poles. What happened there? Oh, uh, Fletcher Scott jibes. Right, so Fletcher Scott comes from the right. And he's wow, got look how he had to thread the needle there. Yeah, wow. yeah. he had the jibe set because he was going to get rolled, so he went immediately into it. And now, look who's all alone on the far side. That Polish team just going for a jibe. So now there's enough separation to really work it out. It's going to be good news for Przbietek and Kolodinski to get into that gold fleet. And on that downwind, it's going to be up to uh, um, the Italians and the Argentinians. Oh, we just got a swim here from the Alonzo brothers. Look left. Alonzo brothers, one's well off the boat, trying to swim back. Look at that. Uh, he might be hanging on to a sheet. He's, he's holding on to his uh, trapeze angle. Brother looks a little oh. bit... Uh, a little bit annoyed at that, and uh, that'll cause a gap. We see Langa up into fifth place. Great uh, news the for them. They're now showing that they're in the lead. If we can get the leaderboards ready here, we'll try and show you the final lap into the finish. Langa was out of it just, uh, at, just at the bottom mark, and now we're showing him up into ninth place based on the changes on that leg. With wow. Hawkins being 10th and Crivelli, Visconti, and Tony... Tonji in 11th place. Incredibly precarious. Get ready for, uh, with uh, how close it is. Only two points, uh, 69.5 and then 71.5. Let's get rid of this board. Let's look on board here. We are with, I think, Peters and Starrett. Is that who this is? Oh, so this is... Look at this. So, so uh, Fletcher Scott there it's right Blancy in the middle with Biffle. Platzi Tessi here going for a jibe, but uh, Fletcher Scott looking good and looking like they're ahead. And there's Przbitsky and uh, Kolodinsky down to Leward, but Fletcher Scott looking the best on the course right now. They're in a beautiful puff. They jibed right on it, and they are absolutely flying over the waves. Let's focus on the Argentinians, uh, if we can, at 
at all. Maybe we can send our drone a little bit down the fleet. It's. Uh, we'll stay with this for okay. the moment anyway, because Plassey and Tessie going for the pass on, on the poles. And Maindorfer, we don't see him. He must be down here below us. But we don't see Maindorfer, who seems to have moved into second place, at least, on the call. Here's Plassey and Tessie. Look, now you can see what that storm looks like coming in. <laughs> Trying to outrun it, get it, get to the finish, get to the, to the beach before it comes in. Going for the jibe. And we'll work off the, we'll work off the analytics uh, when it comes to qualification to the medal race. And it's so close between uh, Crivelli, uh, Botin, Lange, and Hawkins. It's just ver a very few points between them. Through the line is Fletcher, Scott, and Biffle, who will take the lead for the regatta, followed by Przbiecek and Kolodinski, who will move into, into the gold medal fleet. Meindorfer Sprenger, a great performance today, followed by Plazzi and Tesse from Italy. And the Portuguese coming in. Right it, now, right now we're showing that the Lange brothers aren't going to make come. it as we see them cross. They've actually they've got their sixth place, but because Botten has passed a couple boats, we've got him o ahead of them in the overall in a tie on points. We'll see if Botten can hold his place as we watch the boats follow through. I think we're up to about eighth now. Austria coming through, Bildstein Husel coming back from that uh, that, that that circle they seen. had to do. So if the next boat through is uh, Botten. I think we're going to see the Lange brothers That's, not make it, and there him. he goes through. I believe we're tied on I points, I think though. Diego Botin might advance here. It's going to be between Spain and Argentina. There we see Australia. That's O'Connor coming through, and Gilmore right behind. So Gilmore's worst Super finish. finishes. Gilmore's worst finish to the regatta by far is in this last pre-medal race round. Wow. Oh, and there's Peters and Finn Starrett. That'll be their drop race, I suppose. Yeah. So disappointing finish for them. Again, very tight racing. Everyone's through the line Super already. tight. <laughs> and on the unofficial results, uh, non-official results, uh, Lange missed out by half a point oh, to make Lord. it wild. But let's see what the official results look like in the end. It's not over. And I'm sure there's protests in the fleet and stuff's going to happen. Well, we know stuff's going to happen. So but this is the top ten. These are the lucky ten so far. There, of course, will be some protests tonight. But uh, Kolodinsky was outside of the outside of the top ten for sure. Down now, all the way up to eighth place on a one fourteen two, um, and then tenth place we see uh, Botten on an eleven one eleven sneaking in. Uh, that is yeah, limping in. We might even say, but <laughs> good for him to make it. And then uh, we go to the next page here, and we can see those who are. You know, just on the outside, I suppose. Lange and Lange, only half a point behind. Ouch. Uh, they had sailed a pretty good race on the final one, but two seventeenths today. They can't be happy with that. No. Uh, no. And also Hawkins and Thomas, only one and a half points back, uh, finishing with a 16-13. So, so much promise and potential. Uh, the, the results will switch around overnight. There'll be some protests, but uh, that top ten looks pretty solid as it is right now. Well, and you know, like... Um when the pressure comes on, some people answer the call and some people don't. Um, and uh, this was a tricky one to call, calling settings before the race, super tricky. I think a lot of guys seem to get caught out with uh, with underpowered rigs uh, a little bit. And uh, and that's that's a, as much of a part as anything else. Who's going to guess the weather right? In this case, they never e even saw more than about 15 knots. And uh, some of them might have been prepared for well over 20. It's coming. Yeah, the, the, luckily this course is really close to shore, so they'll sail in as quickly as they can. Uh, silver, or uh, on one of the other race courses, I can see they're still racing. So they'll be hit by the storm a little harder, but maybe maybe there'll be enough minutes for everyone to escape home safely. We can see the race officers will be busy hauling up their anchors and heading in. What a great day of racing. Oh, man. I we mean, saw the foiling, NACRA 17, uh, show us what they got. They put their spinnakers up upwind. They foiled upwind. They used their regular mode upwind. They certainly foiled a lot downwind. Almost got some foiling jibes. There's some boats going practicing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't get enough, can no. they, these guys? I mean, no, it's not enough to, to race all day. Let's, let's look at the analytics, and I think there's, there's just one. You see if you spot something, but what sticks out for me is the speed. What sticks out for me is the speed on uh, Fletcher, Scott, and Bithel. Um, they, they, they were the fastest boat in this fleet, and they had a tremendous day. Is that, is that good news for the metal race? Uh, how how important do you think will it be tomorrow to be fast? Uh, speed actually will not be the defining characteristic tomorrow. It's always important. But in a 
theater style race what will be important is also the combination of your speed starts and how well you can perform your maneuvers the guys aren't going to be able to line up and do long runs and tuned runs they're going to have to tack constantly mm. so it's not so much accomplishing the tack it's how well you can get into your groove again on the new tack and on yeah. the new jibe uh, we saw some uh, adva uh, uh, some examples of that when guys would set in the jibes they can all do their jibes but how quickly can they get onto uh, their full speed again so s speed a part of it but other parts too another fun fact maybe Maybe, uh, you know, they've been racing for 20 minutes and the dis difference in distance was six meters they covered. <laughs> so wow. uh, that's also some something that the SAP sailing analytics give us just uh, interesting. Uh, we saw it was so much more in the Nakara. And now we see in the background some dark evil clouds. I think that looks more like it. So if we could get that image up for a second and then look at the FX results if we have them, that'd be great. I think to me looking at just, just this right here, more importantly than, than their speed, just giving them, look at that, just giving them the confidence back. They know they had a bad day, and this sort of proves that it was just one bad day. Now they can go in feeling strong, feeling like they're the favorites again, as they felt earlier in the week. Oh, yeah, that does look like a big storm. <laughs> yeah. So the guys are going to be sailing in as quickly as possible. Wait to see if we get any lightning. <laughs> the, there was only a 10% chance of the lightning hitting here, so we're going to cross our fingers everyone's in before that really hits, but... Congrats to our weatherman. He called it for 15 minutes from now, and I'm going to guess 15 minutes from now it's going to be pouring with rain. Let's take a, take a look at the 49er FX Gold Fleet Racing, which happened earlier today on Course 2. And uh, there we go. Interesting. Jotzok and Lawrence. Uh, not, I, yesterday I mentioned n not necessarily the team in full power conditions that performed well. I assume they were full power today, and they uh, performed uh, magnificently. Um, so that is the unofficial results before um, before the medal races tomorrow, right? They they went through their six gold fleet races. We need a better name for it. Uh, Alan and I uh, thought <laughs> we okay, put well, it out we'll for the social after, media. <laughs> but I can see Alan very excited about us uh, some spotting at the bottom of the fleet there. Crazy. Okay, our leader for almost the entire week is now in tenth place. Just squeaking in, Yenna Hansen, silver medalist from Rio, along with Katja Everson, and and 18, 19, 19. That's astonishing. That'll be an interview we're going to have to get. We're going to have to get it. Great to see the Swedes, Gross and Klinga popping in as well. Ida Marie and uh, and Thusgard coming in. The Japanese have been performing very well. Dewey Covert and uh, Jessica Kister is also get, do, having a spectacular. Just look at that, a one, one two, two 15. to finish. Wow, fantastic! And Agra they're now sisters. fighting for the. Uh, they're now fighting for a medal here. And Germans in first and third. So uh, continuing to perform really well, the German teams. What a teams. beautiful picture of Kiel. I'm telling you, man, this place is special. It's it really is. And by the way, that leg you see there in the background, that is quite interesting. When the wind switch uh, shifts further to the, to the right, like past that concrete block, the Olympic center, then the right-hand side becomes the most interesting side and that's in due part because of that lake that is just a dip in the landscape and and then you get a fresh breeze a it bit. accelerates through that bit and you see there's less forest and more fields so nice shot on that and we're right in the middle of that concrete block let's also have a look if we have the NACRA 17 results we'll just go over that one more time before we uh, send you guys home for the day I think maybe we'll give them a second to, we to can do see that. we can see how uh, narrow the cloud band is you know we've got bright sky on one side of it uh, cloud on the left the the teams here as they race into the center you can probably see in the uh, the boats coming in right through the middle a couple ribs uh, at the bottom of the screen here they're able to sail into the olympic center and then they park their boats up the ramps there they've probably got 10 minutes 20 minutes to get here without getting wet i mean obviously they're already soaking wet but no one likes to pack up in the rain uh, their sails are probably dry uh Oh, this, looks this, nice. this shot is a great example of what uh, a government can do with the right will to keep those odd things that you build during the Olympics that in most Olympics end up being unused or, or some kind of an albatross. I mean, this thing has been in use constantly for sailing since 1972, and it's, uh, it's got one of the biggest regattas in the world based out of it. It's just a wonderful place, and you know, part of the reason why, why Germans, Germans produce such great sailors. They built a copy of it in Tallinn for the Moscow Olympics in, I think it was 1980, yeah, 80 right. it was. Uh, so it doesn't quite look that fresh anymore. <laughs> no, it doesn't look like a modern building. Speaking to an architect over here. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, 
it, it does the job. And frankly, those little those little bunks, that, that building is full of little tiny bunks and uh, places where sailors can stay. Very simple, but very clean and exactly what you need. There's also, you know, sail lofts in there and uh, and uh, uh, chandleries and where you can go buy your, you know, whatever you want. So good stuff from that. I don't know if we're going to ever get those Necro, Necro 17 results on the screen. No, here we are in studio. No, I guess not. But that's okay. You guys can head over to NACRA17.org. They're back up. Um, and check out all the results. They are online right now. You can also head over to 49er.org and see the results there for both the FX and the 49er fleet. We've got news releases. We've got great photo albums uh, from uh, Sailing Energy, our friends Pedro and Tomas. All sorts of videos from all sorts of great people and content constantly coming our way. And thank you for posting and sharing your own content. It's, uh, it's making it more fun for us to read what you guys are seeing from out here or what you think from back home. So a reminder, what's on store tomorrow? We've got three sets of theater-style races coming to you. Each, each series that we've been wa featuring here will have three races tomorrow starting at noon. We've got the Foiling Nacro 17 first up, followed by the 49er FX, and then the 49er. Should take about three, three and a half hours. Each series is just over an hour. The races are 10 minutes long. It's super high intensity. As we know, the forecast is for pushing 20 knots, so we're really going to see which teams can handle their boats and their conditions and, of course, their competition. All right. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll update you on the contest stuff spinnaker-watches.com we've uh, we've pumped it and pl plugged it enough um but you guys can obviously keep taking pictures of yourself even if you're watching the, the replay to our american listeners it doesn't have to be live we're not going to award that watch until tomorrow we're going to award or that gift certificate until tomorrow we're going to award yesterday's competition winner via facebook in a couple hours as soon as we get downstairs um and so thank you for playing thank you to uh, adidas as well for supplying so much of our great gear thank you to sap sailing for doing such a great job and uh Boy, it's been a lot of fun. So for Marcus Bauer, Ben Remacher, I am Alan Block. Let's get out of here and do some work and go enjoy uh, singing in the rain. See you tomorrow.